Hello, everyone listening. Um, I just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, unfortunately, in this episode, we had a little bit of internet issue for myself personally. Uh, I'm working on getting that fixed in the future, so hopefully there won't be any audio problems for myself. Um, but just as a heads up, there's a little bit of times in the episode where fortunately it cuts out a little bit for myself, but hopefully it doesn't affect it too much. Um, but going forward, just as a heads up, please leave any questions for a Q&A that we'll be doing coming up shortly. And if you have any thoughts as well on anything you'd like for us to speak about, please leave that as well. And I hope you enjoy the episode. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of An Unexpected Podcast. And today I'm joined by my co-hosts, Matt, uh, Rainier, and Tim. And uh, today we're going to be going through our normal list review, but we're actually going to be reviewing one of our own host lists, which is Tim. He's uh, going to a tournament, and we're going to be telling him how bad he's going to lose. And then uh, we're going to be going over the ring rays. Um, the, so we're going to be ranking them all, uh, 10 of them actually, because we're including the generic one in the profile. We'll get to all of that, but that's what we're going to be doing for today's episode. So without further ado, Tim, go ahead and bring up your list. What are you uh, going to conquer the world with? Okay, so ju just to give a quick background on the tournament, it's going to be a three-game tournament where the scenarios are predetermined. Um, but it's a possibility of um, three different scenarios each round. So let me just, this is the list. So I'll go over that and then I'll go over the, the scenarios and then I'll tell you why I picked this list. Um, even though that says Sultan, that's autocorrect for you. Um, this is Suladan uh, on Armored Horse with Bow. Uh, this is 650 points, by the way. Uh, he So he has his bow. I have three Serpent Riders. I have two Watchers of Karna with the Twin Blades. Actually, I have it's two Robert Watchers of Karma. With twin blades? Oh, is that karma? Oh, <laughs> yeah, they're, yes. They're They've got karma, so they, they have a really good luck. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's the thing. You know, if they if they if they do right, they do they survive. If they don't, they die. You know, that's that's the whole thing about <laughs> and them. Then, and then they come back as a you know an iguana or something. I'm actually looking yeah. for those uh, hard warriors with bows and spears that you have. Oh, the hard warriors. Yeah, that's, yeah. A lot of <laughs> that, that's a little TMI there, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, gotta love autocorrect. Uh, okay, so believe it or not, I know it says uh, Watchers of Karma, but it's Watchers of Karna, um, and, and I've chosen to go with the Blades, um, because I just think they're more useful in combat than the Bows. Uh, three African Merchant Guard, I have one Harad Warrior with Bow, and six Harad Warriors with Bows and Spears. Uh, then I have Shagrat with Heavy Armor and the Shield of Kirith Ungol. No, it's the Shield of Kirith Unroll. Oh, the sheriff, <laughs> which I think allows you to re-roll the dual die, but I, I can't remember. I'd have to look that up. Basically, if you're watching this, um, autocorrect really didn't like my list. It wanted to make its own <laughs> suggestions for the episode, everyone, so it said, "You know, everyone's <laughs> everyone so confused. They're like, what are they talking?' About? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody listening? Basically, autocorrect has done a number on my list uh, and, and decided to just absolutely autocorrect it. Uh, but believe it or not, it's not it's not unroll." which I wish it was an ability, you know, you unroll your dice, you know, but uh, it's Shield of Kirith Ungol. Uh, he has with him six Black Numenorians and six Morans with Shield and Spear, and Gurrits with six Black Numenorians and six Morans with Shield and Spear. So it is 42 models, it is nine might, and eight bows at 650 points. Uh, the first scenarios, I believe, are Seize the Prize, um, those kind of collective... Um, that group, uh, you know, where you got to go and get stuff and uncover it. Uh, the second scenario is Lords of Battle, To the Death, um, Contest of Champions. So it could be any of those. And then the third one is um, another kind of mobility thing where I believe it's, uh, I think it's heirlooms with whichever ones are in that section. So essentially two of them are objective-based. Uh, I, I think one of the ones on this, the third one is... Uh, I think control the battlefield and um, what's the one where you're on the hill again, where you try to control um, hold the ground. hill? Hold ground is the one where you try and control the center. And I think it says mm -hmm. the, so, it's supposed to be a hill, but they don't actually necessarily put yeah. a hill there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So, so, so I thought I was thinking now they do have an option, which um, I actually chose not to do because I thought about it in two ways. Um, this is kind of my intro back into the uh, tournament scene. So you could take two lists. So you could take a good list and an evil list. They gave you the option to take both. And essentially, if I were to go up against Rainier 
and Rainier had his two lists, we'd both select which one we'd want to go against. And if we both selected the same one, we'd roll a die to see who gets what, which one. But we essentially, it's always good versus evil. So any army list I go against will be a good army list. Um, so it's a little unique in that. I've never experienced that before. But, you know, it's great to see something like that, something different. Um, so I'm excited about that. Um, I, I did have another idea, which was Lake Town. Um, but I figured I couldn't make a list for Lake Town I was super happy with. Um, because you get three tournament points for having a fully painted army. And really the only two army lists I have fully painted would have been uh, Lake Town and Harad slash Mordor. So for me, that um, that kind of limits my options for because just because I'm trying to get as many points as possible. So I owed this because I knew that I would be going up against a, a good army and it forces my opponents to play their good army list as well. Um, so it, it, it helps me understand what I'll be going up against a little bit easier. Um, but if somebody only has an evil army and I only have an evil, evil army, I will go up against an evil army again. So it sounds a little confusing. Basically, my, I'm supposed to go up against good armies. However, if they only have an evil army, I will go up against their evil army. So the um, only but, round we know you're going to be facing a good army for a fact is the first one. Correct, yes. Uh, well, actually, that's not true because Well, assuming a balanced number of evil and good lists. Yes. So essentially... Um, if that first round person did only have one list, then I would go against their only one list. But it, it all depends on, uh, you know, who I get drawn against, essentially, and what they have. Um, so I guess it depends on each round. So in theory, someone could just have uh, one, all three opponents could just have one list. Um, I'm not sure what the scene is down there. It might be competitive, it might not be. From the sounds of things, it's a little less competitive. Some people might only have one army. Well, um, let's just go over the list review as it is now. Yeah. I think yes. a lot of the other details are probably not important to most of our viewers. Okay. Um, but, you know, because you haven't formatted the list in any specific way against good armies. I don't see anything in here that where you're trying to play against that. So it seems yeah, I, I relevant. Think, I think <laughs> I agree with that too. Like it's the black new manures are great, but I'm not sure how well they'll do against good armies especially yeah, actually, I was well, see a lot of good. I don't even high, high defense high courage so so um, I, I put in the black numenorians for a specific reason which was if somebody has terror if somebody has um i see courage yes yeah, so i needed to be able to charge things i need to be able to get in where i needed to be able to get in but also you know if i'm able to stop people going into myself a little bit then that helps as well but it was mostly for the courage base I like and the fight for be, 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 because um people like a lot of times like don't realize what they, this is a historical alliance so basically all of your army is going to reroll ones and your uh black numenorians are going to be courage five because all of the mordor troops well assuming i have a number yeah i well 42 models at six i should be pretty, i should pretty, be pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty sure you should yeah be outnumbering say. so I, I do like that aspect um of it like everything that you just remember keep in mind you're probably going to be re-rolling ones on everything so always keep that in mind because i'm like notorious for forgetting my rules but yeah I, I i like it uh um one thing i might change is like you have an equal amount i think of spears with with non-spears that's that's really good i guess because your battle line uh but yeah i'd probably switch it around here or there maybe to get like one more cav model in there but I like it. I think it's really good at 650, to be honest. 42 models, you have 12 terrifying models. And like you said, too, I like how you mentioned that the 12 terrifying models are also going to be Courage 4 or 5. Um, that's a huge, huge bonus because you're probably going to see like some terrifying stuff out there with good bait. I like it a lot. You have the African Guard to like punch through armor, Watchers of Karna um, to add some more dice to the fights and stuff. Soladan might be a you might be losing a lot of um, general points because he only has one fate, but I love the shag rat inclusion, especially say if you come against Lords of battle and you just toss shag rat right next to Soladan. And that's like, wow, uh, shag rats kind of like one of those sleepers that I feel like is going to like wreck in a lot of your games. Mm -hmm. So I, I like it a lot. I, I would, I would love to play this list to be honest at 650. Yeah. I mean, I thought this was a really good list too. I don't have a lot that I would necessarily change about. I, you know, I was thinking about making some tweaks here, but the, they're really preference calls. It's like, you know, how much you like the watches of Karna versus the 
the uh, African guard. And I think this works. I mean, I think the advice I give you, I guess, would be in how to use this army rather than how to change this army. And that's um, you have you have two war bands of really of really tough foot defense. You know, you can you're going to be putting up two ranks of defense six foot. Um, and then you've got a bunch of squishy Harad stuff. And I guess the advice I would give you if you are going to end up playing against a, you know, one of these good armies that has a bunch of shooting and perhaps, you know, blinding light is don't get your head wrapped around, okay, I got to use my, I got to use my seven bows um, to get shots off on these guys. I just, I just literally forget about the seven bows in those circumstances. If you're going to be outshot, um, create a shield, you know, create that defense sick shield wall, have it move up and just hide the squishy stuff um, behind that shield wall until you kind of, you get in range where it can actually kind of, you know, deploy out from to one side or the other of the uh, shield wall and actually get into play. Um, that's the one thing I would suggest is do not get into long range gun duels with this army because the squishy stuff will, stuff will get shot down and then the uh, the tough stuff will be, you know, kind of left out of range plotting toward your opponent. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Like you only really want, want to shoot if you can outshoot them like by far if they don't have any shooting. I also think too, if you leave those eight, a classic mistake, I don't think you'll make it, but for viewers, a classic mistake would be to keep all, all your bows back as your army goes forward. You have eight bows you would take your 42 models and make it 34 in combat. I like the idea of everything, like Matt said, sticking together because mm -hmm. it's going to keep that horde aspect to it. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Yeah, okay. I mean, I would have trouble adding on to anything. I mean, honestly, I was going to just go into all the good aspects of the list. <laughs> like, <laughs> just don't shame us, Tim. That's what, what we're asking. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you definitely have like, a lot of bases covered here. I mean, as far as like, you know, support for your battle line with the banner, the Hurric March, two characters, Hurric Strike, plus they're both heavy hitters. Gertz is actually no slouch. Right. Um, you know, Watch the Carnage stopping like area effect magic. You know, you have pretty much a lot going on, just enough bows to be threatening to anything where you need to be. Um, uh, you know, there's, it's not it really almost any change I could make is a preference item, right? And I think your call on Black Numenorians with Terror is a good one. Um, I like that reason a lot better than uh, trying to have Terror yourself. Um, so realistically, the only like the only thing I would have done differently, honestly, is maybe Magic. But once again, that's a preference item, and honestly, could really weaken your list in a lot of ways because you lose a heavy hitter trying to do it because i'm not sure i'd want to give up gurits um so yeah i mean 42 miles so, i might and 650 is great the reason why i went with I'll, I'll just give a very quick reason why i went with e. so when i looked at the scenarios as possibilities um there were there's movement based right like two of them were basically movement based so i wanted at least three serpent riders to be able to go and get stuff along with suladine if he needs to um and there's also uh with the tournament points it's based on how many you get and then the tiebreaker is vp difference so it's a system in england where it's like uh for anyone who watches soccer it's it's goals for versus goals against equals goal difference so if i have 60 goals and i you know concede 30 i have a plus 30 goal difference right so for this it's tournament vp difference so how many i scored versus how many i give up equals my total uh, VP difference in this tournament. So it, I wanted to be able to have two hitters, like Shagrat and Suladan. Also, you have the six-inch banner. Um, you get the ability, and and, the, and I know we were talking about the Watchers. Basically, I brought the Watchers for their ability to charge stuff as well. I wanted something where if I need to get into a ring wraith, if I need to get into, or assuming I go against something with terror minus one, um, I have the ability to charge it. Let's say Lady of Light, for example. And that, I'll bring up uh, good magic. Knowing that I was going to go against good armies. Well, there goes Tim. So he's um, having a bit of a... It, most people issue. probably try to... Uh, oh, sorry. Um, am, I, am I all set? Am I all good? You're having a little bit of... Uh, uh, you, you're saying mo most point, people but... try to ally. 
Most okay, sorry. Most people try to ally in uh, Galadriel, Lady of Light. I think at this many points, if you're playing good, because you want to protect your heroes, she can do a right. She's like the perfect person to fit in. But Lady of Light has no impact on Shagra or Suladon unless it's specifically in a minus one courage based scenario, right? Because she can't stop my heroes, and she can only go and fight against them. And I'm not saying fight six with three attacks isn't something to be concerned about. But that's really the the wizard you're going to be going against most likely if they bring a wizard as Lady Light, and there's nothing she can do besides fortify spirit and banish. I have nothing to banish, and there's no point of her fortify spearing. So essentially, they brought the the model against me personally, and it's not going to have any real effect besides her fighting. Um, well, she does have instilled fear, but at least you're going to get a plus one courage against that. So that's yes. another check you have to. Yeah, I, I think I think I don't know if you'll see Lady of Light. That well, that's the thing, and I, I made that assumption. I, I, I think I think you'll see uh, Dead Legion, to be honest, and I like your Watch the Karna for that reason. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I don't know why, but I just have a feeling you'll see the Dead. I think the Watch the Karna and Shagrat will do like some serious like the work. Dead at six fifty. Yeah, that's, you're not so. going to see many of the Dead at six fifty. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that that's true. Be very big. Um, I'm just thinking myth myth mythicos because you have a lot of theme players there, so. Yeah, that may be. I don't know. I have no idea what the local. Then, meta then is. that's a meta thing. But yeah, yeah, I mean, for our viewers, anyone who's going to a six fifty point tournament, I wouldn't expect the dead. You should expect, you know, Thillian Rangers or Lake that, Town. Uh, yeah, Lake Town, Corsairs. Brad Spam. You'll probably see some Corsairs mm -hmm. too. Yeah, mm -hmm. anything that doesn't have a massive hero requirement. Anytime the reason me and Matt, or I assume Matt, is also uh, saying the dead probably won't show up is you're, you're required to bring two expensive heroes before you can even begin building your roster. And that's just, that's not really going to work at 650. I, I don't know. I mean, I've never tried. I, I, I think Tim's fear of Galadriel Lady of Light is, is well-founded. I know I would be bringing Galadriel Lady of Light at, at 650. So, yeah. I mean, whether and, whether or not the, the local meta is you know going to go that way, I don't know. But certainly if Galadriel Lady of Light shows up, this is definitely a list that will minimize her impact. Well, and, and the other thing I thought of, right, is on the good side, the cheapest wizard they have besides Galadriel is Radagast, who's 150. So you're basically, you're building a 500-point list to fit in Radagast. Or if you wanted Gandalf or Saruman, you're, you're putting a 180 points into an 150. So I just don't think you're going to see many wizards. So I'm not really too concerned about wizards in general, because I don't think you're going to really see them at this many points value, unless it's Lady of Light or maybe Radagast. But that'll be yeah. it. I think the magic you're going to end up running into if you run into magic is more likely to be ring wraiths. Yes. Um, just because I think they are, they're kind of more cost effective um, magic at lower points level. I mean, in particular, the generic ring race rather than the, the named ones, but um, you know, they're the ones that are kind of more cost effective at the lower points levels, especially now that they can pluck people off of horses. But yes. you know, again, this isn't a, this, you know, this isn't a, a, a list that, necessarily is going to be given fits by ring race i think in that circumstance you just kind of hide sulit in behind the line and let his six inch banner do the earn his points back for him and let your hard-hitting guys do their damage and that's and that was another reason why i went with um the, the i want i knew that i would be going against good armies and i would fight for you know tie the general basis but also, if I go against evil armies, I have a fight for front line, so I'm probably winning most of those fights as well. And with the terror wall at that point as well, it would help out with them charging less against evil. So it kind of fits both roles where I can charge things I need to uh, with the Courage 4 from the Black Minorians, but I also stop um, my opponent if I go against evil um, to kind of prevent them from charging it as much. All right. But yeah, that's my list. Good luck, <laughs> Let us Okay, yeah, good luck. you're the, you're what, the first what? of us to go forward into a tournament uh, post COVID. So <laughs> yeah, you're, carry, yeah, I'll, you're I'll, carrying the banner for the podcast. So don't let us down. <laughs> I will specifically make a banner now specifically for that tournament. I'll just wave it around, you know, yeah. left and right. So you don't expect the <laughs> podcast on it. I mean, um, I, I, I guess I guess Suladan is is really carrying that banner, but still, you know. <laughs> all right so i guess we'll go into the main topic for okay. today which uh we're actually going to be ranking the uh 
the ring rays from one through 10. Like I said, we are adding the generic ring rays into this whole discussion because it is different enough to be considered a different type of option. Um, but uh, what we'll be doing the is 10 ring rays. There the you iconic go. Iconic 10. Yeah. <laughs> They're like 10. I thought there was nine. And then you see just this one Billy the ring ray. Oh, forget like, me. Hey. <laughs> what about me? It's like a Hobbit ring race. Who's that guy? I don't guy know. I never Billy remember Ray. his name. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, for the sake of time, we will not be including Dougaldor race into this. That'll be a different podcast. Yeah, and we're not going to be going deep into their profiles either. We're going to be doing yeah. like a quick. We'll uh, we'll explain kind of like the generic one, but then after that, we'll be listing differences, things and subtle little small differences you may have not noticed when going over the profiles. So I guess um, we'll just go down the list. Uh, from each wraith uh, as we see its appearance in the book i'll just start with the witch king kind of go over it real quick and then from there we can talk about differences with the other profiles so uh the first one that we see in the book in the lord of the rings book is the uh witch king of angmar so um just running through him real quick because he is a fairly large profile but essentially he's 70 to 150 points you're going to notice with him and the ring regular ring rays you can get out their points and um uh, it, we'll go into how that's done, but they're fight five, strength four, defense eight, one attack, one wound, courage six. This is the base stats of which all the race usually start. Then there's, uh, he is, he, this one is from zero to three might, 10 to 20 will, zero to three fate. Note that all the other name wraiths that we're going to talk about are already static. <clears throat> and then uh, heroic actions is resolve, channeling, strike, ch- strength, and challenge. And then options, there's a lot of them. <laughs> and you got Armored Fell Beast, Fell Beast, uh, Crown of Morgul, which we'll be talking about, the Armored Horse, Horse, Morgul Blade, Two-Handed Flail. So the Witch King is going to be noted for the fact that he has more options than any of the other race. Most of them are just sticking with the mounts. Uh, you know, so do we need to go into the options? Are we going into, like, what yeah, are we, we, can say, we can say why, why we ranked... The, well, like, go go yeah, into the you options. You mean talking about the stats for the options? Yeah, I, th- I yeah. think we I think we gotta. All right then. So armored fell beast is a fell beast with a defense of seven rather than six. So normally they are six. Uh, the fell beast actually, and I'm going off memory here. They're they're fight six, strength six, defense six. Uh, fight two five, attacks. Fight five, they're fight five, five. five. Oh, they're fight five. That's right. Yep. Your they're memory five, is important. fleeting, Devin. Very important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, no, I'm not even reading it. I'm going off. Just I just went off of my memory. So yeah. Fight five, strength six, defense six, uh, two attacks, three wounds, and uh, courage five, I think? Courage three, uh, although it doesn't come up that much. By the way, the armored fell beast, which is the one he's reading off, is defense seven. That's the, you pay 20 points. It's a difference of 70 mm-hmm. points to 50 points to get that one defense seven. I think we talked about on the last podcast where somebody bought an armored fell beast. Don't buy an armored fell beast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, Not worth 20 don't, points don't for it. one defense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and and by yeah, th- this is definitely the armored fell beast is definitely on a list of things that need to be fixed. Yeah, um, like badly. <laughs> you know what would be interesting, by the way, is if in addition to the defense seven, the armored fell beast uh, made you fight six or ha- had fight six, making the that would ring race really race help for six. the ring race. Yeah, actually. that would that would make yeah. them like actually terrifying. Yeah, um, because I mean, I, the problem is if, if they could strike right, but if you just give them fight six and they can't strike, that's perfectly acceptable at that point. Yeah, and, and I think that's the right tiles. cost. I think that's the right cost for it too. Is the, mm-hmm. is twenty About points 20. for plus one defense and plus one fight? I think is you, right. Yeah, because the then you're paying one ninety per each named with a horn, with a yeah. armored fell beast, and then that's actually like quite a lot of points. Well, let me ask you this though, I, just because I want to bring this up because it's kind of relevant. So with um, the Dark Marshal, he's already fight six. Does that make him fight seven? In no. that case, no, you wouldn't like, take him with an armored fell beast. Yeah, or you, okay, or, you, you just know, okay, or or he would pay like five points for an armored fell beast. Yeah, or, yeah, gotcha. you decrease the cost or something. Yeah. Of that, right? Okay, him specifically doesn't. Okay, him gotcha. specifically would have a cost decrease on. Right. And then, um, so going into the crown of Morgul, the crown of Morgul is specific to the Witch King. Uh, if the Witch King has a crown of Morgul's attack value is increased to three. Additionally, while wearing the crown, the Witch King can choose to re-roll one dice when making casting a resist test, which is huge. This uh, is pretty much an auto-include in most lists, even no matter what point value you take the Witch King. It's pretty rare that someone doesn't take them unless we're just really fighting for points. Um, I don't know the statistics, and Mick probably would, but it like it, it's like equivalent to, I don't know, not doubling your will, but like 
I guess it's significant. It's really yeah. significant. Yeah, it's like, like increase, and then it's increasing it by fifty percent probably is. Yeah, probably yeah. safe assumption. And that's not just that; like it makes him a combat beast too. Yeah, the 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 changing the attacks from one to three if you're you know if you're not on especially even if you are on a fell beast yeah. is I mean I pay twenty five points for that right there most of the time. Oh yeah. Um, but that's when you see him like on horse all the time now too. Yeah. And you're like, oh shoot, like this is a three attack like beast. Him. Like yeah. And 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 I mean mm-hmm. and it's and it's not ju- I mean just saying he you know it's the equivalent of extra will is is not quite right because you you have that ability to you know throw two will into a um you know two will into a spell and then if you make it with one um then you can always just re-roll the other and see if you can get it higher i don't know maybe that is actually the equivalent of having an extra will to to throw at the spell but i mean the the technique you want to do with the crown of morgul is you do a lot of like two will spells and then um you know assuming one goes off on like you know if you're transfixing somebody and one goes off on a four and the other one other die rolls a one you could be like hmm okay i'll just re-roll that and see if i can get a six on that oh look there it is now it's a six um Mm -hmm. and uh yeah, it's a great way. To in do fact, it. Three guys. when when you see some of his things, like what Drain Courage is on a two, you can like roll it once, and even if you hit like a three and you get it, you're like, actually, let me just re-roll it, just for whatever, in case you get a five or a six, so it's harder to resist. It's yeah, it's significant. I mean, the other little trick you can do, and don't forget about this, is if you're gonna, a lot of times you're gonna be two dicing a resist check too, and or even three dicing a resist check, and um, you know, not only can you just re-roll everything that that fails. But even if you, you know, say you make a resist check with a five, you can take that other one die or two dice and re-roll them, see if you can get sixes and get that will that you spent mm-hmm. back. Um, so don't forget about that little trick either. And now um, the next thing we have is the Morgul Blade, which just, it auto kills a model if you wound it with it. If they don't save it with fate. Yeah, if they don't save it with fate um, or any fury or anything like that. Um, and uh, then the special rules, which are pretty much specific well, to all b- the rules. Before we get there, let, let's actually have a discussion on the Morgul Blade because I'm curious what the Morgul Blade is something that I end up never taking um, for 10 points. And I'm curious what other people's thoughts are. I never are. take it for 10 points either. No, I, I, I don't take it either. And the reason is you have so many custom, custom built customizations of him, and I would just prefer either one more might and one more fate or even will over it i just i just like you want to get all those special things i usually put them on a crown maybe a fell beast and get the sweet spot with like three might one or two fate and just you don't want to add the morble i I mean and and the morble blade i I never do it just because cost yeah i think i think to be honest with you it's just simply because it's a one-time shot so if you screw it up it just goes away and it's like okay so i paid 10 points for essentially nothing yeah, it, it is a one-shot weapon, so it's not like it, it's not like you're you're automatically auto killing with wounds that yeah. um, somebody doesn't save with fate. Yeah, if it was if, like if, every turn, if, if you're going change. against like a two two wound model with one fate, you're not going to really use it because you'll either knock the person down with a horse or a fell beast and kill them anyway. So I don't really see the purpose. If it was like 15 points, but it lasted the whole game. I'd honestly consider it. Well, it yeah. would be pretty unthematic to last the whole game. <laughs> I know, but I mean, it's just like how we, it, or lower it to five points. And then I'll be like, okay, for five points. And, to be and I to think it's a good eagle some, killer, maybe. Don't some, fa- don't the, like the Castellans of Dolgal Dora have a five point Morgul Blade? They do. I think yeah. so. I, I mean, yeah. at five points, I think I, I, I would definitely think about bringing one along if I had an extra five points. I know for whatever reason, the, the break of five to 10 is enough to kind of put it in the, yeah, I think just the practical applications of it is like, I mean, there's enough. Like, most people say, well, there's a lot of three wound heroes, but I mean, he have you guys ever, let me have you guys ever actually killed something with before? I'm pretty like sure something. I have. I mean, over the course of all the games we've all played, I'm sure. yeah, like in like uh games with friends and stuff, it's certainly I've never gotten into this as like the armored fell beast like if someone brought a morgul blade in their list i wouldn't immediately be like oh, i shouldn't have done that like there are uses to it yeah, it's I just mean, hard uh, though because like when, when you're when you're prepping for like a competitive event that is like 10 points is actually a lot 
I mean, at your, your list, Tim, like 650, like 10 points can go a long way. 10 points can shield 10 Moranins. 10 points can get an extra uh, watcher of Karner, like, like, and something else. Like it's, it goes a long way that it's going to be more significant. That's why I feel I personally wouldn't take it. You know what it is? Yeah. You know what it is useful against are that really the, the major use for it are the high wound figures that don't have fate like monsters and mm, like the eagles iron hills, or cave trolls the iron hills chariot for one thing you can Ooh. stab the, you can one shot kill the chariot um but the, i mean those are kind of you don't see a lot of monsters you don't see a lot of iron hills chariots um so it's probably because every time we talk you know when you talk about like a regular monster people always go well i wish it had might so people just go oh i'm not taking it but you're right and if you if you came up against a Gundabad troll or something like that, kill 120. Yeah, what we could catch, Tim. Like I agree with you. Like if you can, <laughs> if you can kill a heavy model like a Gundabad troll or a da 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 or a dee dee da da, like it would really really help. <laughs> but that that said too, I think it'd be cool because in the books and even in the movie. You, he stabbed Frodo and Frodo was going to turn into a wraith like him. It'd be cool if you used it, it killed the model, and then like two turns later, you get to control the model. Not to its full or like you get potential. your own wraith figure, additional wraith figure. That, that would be, be so like, broken. Yeah. That would be so broken. Be that so would be, fun. It'd be horrifically <laughs> broken. <laughs> Even I, if you pulled out a zero seven zero wraith, that'd be so gross. What, I, I think that would actually be really cool. Um, I would mean, it obviously, it, you'd have to have it cost probably more than 10 points if you did that, but that would just yeah. be a fun game. Yeah. yeah. And it, 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 could, it wouldn't have to be like, okay, you stab an eagle, then you get to control an eagle, but maybe you just replace it with, like you said, like a wraith model. Yeah, you get a bunch with of wraith. You get a zero seven zero bunch of wraith. I think at that yeah. point you'd have to specify a, a man model. Man size model. Like, yeah. Well, if no, not man size. Like convert a convert man. an eagle to like yeah. look like a real like, It would have to be like a man that you would mm. like because I don't or know. A hobbit. Yeah, man. Or, or yeah, hobbit. yeah, I guess a hobbit. Yeah. Oh, so okay. So yeah, man size model would be correct then. So if it, right. if a hobbit could arguably be transformed, then a dwarf and an elf shouldn't really be an issue. But um all right. Well, that's probably the most we'll ever talk about a Morgul. So blade. where would we where would we rank <laughs> rank uh, the so, Witch King? Well, we still have more to go through here. So oh, real oops, quick, oops, oops. Arpenter of Evil, Terror, Will of Evil is is basically pretty universal amongst all these guys. Uh, might will fate specific to the Witch King and the Ring Rays. You can basically spend five points to get either a Might Will or Fate up to those maximums that I mentioned three twenty and three, uh, and then magical power. So. I'm going to run through these real quick. Drain Courage, range 12, casting value of 2 up. This is normal. Transfix, 12 range, 3 uh, up. Uh, compel at 12 inch, 4 up. Instill Fear at 3 inches, 4 up. Now, this is unique to the Witch King. It's actually one compelling reason to bring him is that his Instill Fear is actually cast easier. Most of the time, it's a 5. Uh, your Staff is Broken is unique to the Witch King. 12 inches, 4 up cast. Uh, Black Dart, 12 inches, 5 up. That's normal. And Sap Will, 12 inches, 5 up. And that is basically the you know what we're going to be uh basing all the differences on is is pretty much really the next profile is really the bring wraith honestly but basically which king is kind of somewhat up um so uh to no surprise of probably anyone in all of our viewers i have him at number one i also have him at number one <laughs> Matt, have matt's him, gonna pull it he's gonna I have be like i have number, number eight. two. Ooh, blasphemy Okay, we'll go over why we have as number one. Then we'll go over why yeah. we got number two. Number one, I just think he's so customizable to where you can optimize him however you want. And we're going to go over all these wraiths and find out, okay, this is a supporter wraith. He doesn't do much combat. He only does magic. This wraith does that, blah, blah, blah. I feel like the Witch King covers all the bases. And yeah. you can even give him, make he's, he's a combat beast, he's a caster beast, and he's a resistant beast. For like maybe 20 to 25 more points than any of the uh, these other rates which i think would be worth it so that's why i put him at number one He's so just... actually for the sake of this list order matt do not disclose who is your number one we will wait i will not all right i will, I will, I will <laughs> so, play my cards close to the close to the vest but twist it's the watcher race yeah <laughs> <laughs> what am i what <laughs> 
<laughs> I yeah, I have him at number one. Uh, mostly that I would say the only function he can't fulfill is that super cheap, like, well, I mean, 70 points is still cheap, but the really super cheap, like 55 point Wraith, which we'll talk about that, that, you know, if you want to like spam a bunch of these guys and that's your goal, but, but otherwise, yeah, usually the, the, the race enter those three categories. Are they a combat Wraith, a, a casting Wraith or a support Wraith? And he covers most of it. I would say the support element is probably a little bit missing unless you count instill fear uh, if you want to consider that a support, which I do. Um, so he's less of a support Wraith, but everything else he accomplishes, I think he, he's definitely an all-rounder that can do what most of them want to do. So, but um, but yeah, so I guess in order for you to tell your why you put him at number two, you have to get to your number one. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say this. I put him at number two for all of the reasons that you and Rainier just mentioned. Um I just think that there is somebody who is even more useful who will at this point remain nameless. Ooh, the that's suspicion. Why at, that's why he's at number two. All right. Um, well, just then... out of curiosity, because we didn't talk about it, has anybody here ever considered taking the two handed flail? Oh, yeah. We totally skipped over that. Uh, no. If it acted like, um, what's his name's flail? Azog's, Azog's, Azog's flail. Yeah. Yeah. Then I probably would consider it. Because oh, then, then I play... definitely consider it. <laughs> yeah. But, but it, uh, I, which I don't know why it doesn't, because his mace is like so much heavier than what Azog was flinging around. Yeah, no like, kidding. Azog put a rock on a rope and was like, "Yeah, let me freaking have this all yeah, powerful exactly. weapon of Middle Earth." <laughs> so, but now this very finely crafted, you know, spiked mace. Nah, it's just a two-handed weapon. It's no different than your average, you know, stick. Yeah. No, I mean. <laughs> Boy, you know what would be fun is if you made this guy burly. Then you'd see that two-handed flail showing up all the time. We're all, we're all, this whole time we're like, what if we did this to him? What if we did that to them? And it's all of that. That would be amazing, though. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, he I wouldn't mean, be burly though. The way he was wielding it against Eowyn. Yeah, like, that's true. <laughs> he's definitely not burly. Like I sometimes wondered when he was like when it would go on the ground. Like why Eowyn didn't just go in for a quick step. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I guess you're right. I mean, he's, he, I think you're right. He's definitely taken that minus one on the dual role in the movie. And uh, you should take minus three. That sucker's like the size of a minivan. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, still, take... if it hits you, it ought to at least do D3 wounds. Cause as you yeah, said, it... that sucker is the size of a minivan. He hit, hit, hit a mini, like a minivan hit you. But it looks yeah. like Tim, well, Tim, you're back. Where would you well, rank it shattered him? Shattered her shield and broke her arm. Like yeah. in one that's swing. true yeah that that thing is uh d3 wounds for sure yep <laughs> it probably knock you to the ground well, yeah. but um I, all right so I, I, I have guess... him at number one you had him at number one all right tim had him at number one yeah, yeah. yeah. that was a great explanation but, all right. so, I, I think that's no, all the explanation we can really get in so yeah. i think what we're going to need to do tim is when we get to you we're going to ask you where you rank them and just hold up fingers <laughs> and, and we'll read it out to the rest of the group. Or, or ty- type it in because maybe the fingers will get stuck on the screen and you'll have yeah, like two right. of them. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Rainier, why don't you go into the next profile we got? And just like I said, name the kind of basically. The difference. Okay. So we have a generic. And by the way, the Witch King of Agmar is a hero of valor. And the next one, the generic Ring Wraith, is a hero of fortitude. His base cost is 55. He does not have all the hero- same heroics. He just has March and Channel. March being actually quite unique. Um, options, of course, Fell Beast, Armored Fell Beast, Horse, same magical powers. And he has the, the same ability where you can add up to two might. Oh, sorry, base. He's zero might, seven will, zero fate. You can add him, add to make him two might, 14 will, two fate. Each one of those might will or fate cost five points. So you can basically customize him in that sense. Uh, but yeah, I think he's really, really good because he does have heroic march. And I think he is one of the only ones that do have heroic march. He is the only one. He's that the only, the only that is huge because we talk about what is it? The three that we name support wraith, uh, cast combat, wraith, com- combat wraith. Yeah. yeah. This like just the march in itself makes his support really yeah. good because he can do that. But I like the ability you can throw in like a 75 point, 80 point wraith on horse, even on foot. You have a great caster, heroic march, and yeah, two two might, 
why not? Why not? I see a lot of people add uh, what's his face, the mouth of Sauron to a lot of lists and they rave about how he's like, oh, like it's he's really good for what he does and his points cost. I'm not sure why people don't take the ring wraith, just the generic ring wraith for the same purpose, because you can customize him however you want. He's still fight five. He can kill people, heroic, do a ton. So yeah, that's his the basic and of course you guys know me with my fight five captains this guy reminds me of them (laughs) i mean uh yeah i i I have to agree i mean at at 65 points if you because you because you want to throw the two might on him um at 65 points just having this like one guy wandering around um with seven will to cast spells with and i mean he's got high courage so he's not going to run away so he's you know a good captain in that sense and he's got two might you can put into a march or heroic move if you want it's that's really hard to to argue with just um just points wise i mean honestly if you compare him to an average shaman like it's absurd how much will he has and like has might and like the ability to even have march like he's pretty much one of the best captains of the game in that sense Yeah, like, you, see, you see them like very late game, like, oh, shoot, they still have a ring race and it still has seven will. Yeah, it's, it's still like just doing shenanigans. So, yeah, again, I have no idea why people don't take the, these as much I as spam they do. them sometimes. Yeah, I'll, spam, I'll, I'll you like can take two, three. Three. <laughs> two, or, two or three and then like even add like the Witch King two or three to list. And you're like, shoot, you got five, five March with two might just everywhere. Like, it's crazy. Well, all right. So the, the reason people don't take them as much as they do. Um, and, and and I think there there is a reason for it. This is the one thing that a regular captain can do that this guy can't, which is reliably go in and kill one warrior a turn. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. Because there this guy has one attack and he loses one of his seven will every time he fights. Um, <clears throat> so what what you can't do with this ring wraith is just throw him in throw him in the front and and do damage. He is, you basically has zero combat. Yeah. capability yeah, I mean, that, it, that's a, that's a it, good difference not, between yeah it's not him, zero him and, um, it's not zero but it kind of approaches zero um you can't five, five is the only reason it's not zero yeah, <laughs> it's like realistic right. yeah, yeah. Um, he's like gandalf the gray in a way like a really really small gandalf the gray to where like gandalf the gray isn't like tearing well, through troops and stuff it's gandalf the gray with one wound yeah, and, yeah, and for those listening, in my opinion, if you try to mount these guys up on Fell Beasts, you can get like these cheap Fell Beast options, but you basically are committing yourself to not casting any magic or maybe one time. Um, I like because, the idea of like just them on foot. Like, uh, no, no, I like b- them behind on foot. Battle, li- battle line. I'm just like saying cast- for 110 points, you get yourself a one might seven will ring wraith on Fell Beast. And for 110 points, you get a flyer. That's not bad. Like, that's your eagle, right? Yeah, but, it's not bad at all. Yeah, but, so that's the kind of thought process. And it's an eagle with point of might. But, but um, you're, you're right about the one roll. Then you're switching, like, it's combat. Yeah. You're not really going to be casting with them. And I think I think all of us agree these suckers are good on foot in the back rank. Might battery for moves and marches and just, yeah. like, doing shenanigans um, throughout the game. So that, that's the one role where I will like kind of mount them up. And but yeah, you are changing yourself completely to a combat wraith. And then and, and, and um yeah, but otherwise as a spellcaster and everything else, I mean I don't know. Like Matt, would you have him ranked us? Uh so I had him ranked at fifth. Um, although mm-hmm. I have to say it's pretty close to the guy that was fourth. So we mm-hmm. can either call him fifth or tied for fourth. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about I you, have him ranked at uh, actually surprisingly enough number five, so <laughs> we both agree there. <laughs> yep, I actually have him ranked at number four, so <laughs> very close. Actually, <laughs> he's he was very very close to getting number three, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I have him ranked up there. Um, as you can see, like he's on the higher end of of the ranked between ten, because I just think he has so much to do, and then I guess my. I'm like high on hordes these days. So he kind of adds to that. And Tim uh, says he has him ranked as six. So Tim, do you want to go ahead and sign language? Why? <laughs> For all our viewers on Spotify, I shall translate. Um, I'll try. I'll try to speak. I know my internet's not being great. Um, I, I like him obviously for his you know ability to take 
you know, magic cheap. Um, I just think that the other people above them for their points, I just, well, not maybe not for their points, but I just think, I just find them a little bit more useful. Like Matt said, you can't throw them into combat. And I think that's a major hindrance knowing that you have a captain who can't essentially do anything um, besides cast magic. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I agree that he's very useful. I just, maybe for myself personally, a little bit less useful less useful but yeah that's pretty much my reason all right and so now we will go into the next hero which is the tainted and uh matt go ahead and tell us what the difference is between him and the normal ring race all right so the tainted hang on give me a moment the tainted is the tainted is not somebody that i can uh um pull up uh out of memory um which will go to uh We'll talk about why in a second. All right, so the Tainted. Um, so he has standard Ring Wraith stats, uh, with the exception of the fact that he has two Might, 14 Will, and two Fate. And those are set, unlike the previous two Wraiths um, that we discussed. The name Wraiths all have set values of Fight, Will, and Fate, and he is a 2 14 2 uh, Ring Wraith, which for named Ring Wraiths, I think is uh, you know, right in the middle of the shot group. That's typically what they have. Um, his only heroic action is heroic channeling. Uh, so no march with him, none of the other funky stuff that the Witch King can do. He has the usual fell beast options. Uh, he can get an armored horse for 15 points or a horse for 10. Um, he has the usual ring wraith special rules. He also has two rules that are unique to him. The first is miaz- miasmatic, miasmatic presence, I guess is how you would say it. Yeah. Um, at the start of the move phase, before heroic actions are declared, the Tainted may elect to spend a point of will. If he does this until the end of the turn, all warrior models within six inches of the Tainted may not benefit from the stand fast rule, nor take part in heroic actions. So uh, this is a heroic action and stand fast damping field. Um, the two things to say about this that are interesting are one, this affects good and evil alike. Um, and in the past, the Tainted did not have the option to turn this on or turn this off. It just, it happened around him. And that can make the Tainted very much a two-edged sword because, uh, you know, he would basically turn off heroic actions for all, all of his models around him. You can now decide whether this is something you want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, which, which is a huge boost to them. Yeah, tactically mm-hmm. useful. Um, and uh, the other thing that's worth... Um, uh, well, I, I guess the other thing that's worth pointing out is that uh, you have to you have to turn it on and and turn it off, which I already pointed out. So now I'm just being repetitive. Um, but yeah, so this is this is kind of his main use. Uh, well, and and we'll talk about you know kind of how he's used on the battlefield in a second. But let me talk through his second special rule, which is not optional. Um, this is always on at the start of the fight phase. Roll a d6 for each non-spirit model, friendly or enemy, in base contact with the Tainted. The model is a cavalry model roll for both the mountain and the rider. On a roll of a six, they suffer a wound. Uh, so this, this guy kills everything that's touching him, and that means everything that's touching him. So you have to be a little careful about him. He's not a guy you routinely want to spear support um, if he is fighting. Uh, and you know he's not a guy necessarily that you want to cram in with a whole bunch of other figures in the battle line because he will start killing them. Um, but, you know, every once in a while, if he gets charged by an enemy hero, the enemy hero's horse will die or, you know, perhaps the enemy yeah. hero will uh, uh, will take a wound. Um, I find the psychological effect is actually almost more important sometimes because while the odds of rolling a six might be quite rare, some people might be hesitant to throw yeah, their hero. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, then, I've surrounded uh, him with like uh, Corsairs against young duke and i'm just like whoa saw him rolling six after six and i was like whoa that was like four <laughs> of my guys just die yeah i know every once in a while you know he'll just he'll just Maybe spike you know, your rolls <laughs> making it making a bowl of burp and you know everybody around him will just croak yeah but uh as far as his spells go by the way um i think his spells, they're standard yeah are standard yeah, so it's yeah. uh yeah, basically the same as a normal ring wraith uh, for all of his spells. So, um, so basically, the real reason you're taking this guy's miasmatic presence and the stat line of two fourteen two. Yeah, um, and 
I confess I've never I've never taken him. I don't think. Has anybody here ever taken him? I have played him and I've seen him in some interesting use applications, which the the number one one you've heard probably is the chariots where you shut down anyone who can charge with chariots and then you roll the chariots over people. I think the more common use that that is a neat little use. I, I think that if you were to kind of use it in the standard way, it's probably most useful. Like if you have a cavalry force or for some reason you want to charge, otherwise it's really not that useful in the, the heroic action department um, other than like, um, and actually it's kind of a weird case when you activate this, like if people do hero combats around him, other people won't jump off with that hero. So you can't use slingshots unless the hero specifically is doing it. But I think the more useful thing is often stand fast. I don't know from, from my playing it anyways, it generally being able, if you break your opponent and you're not broken, uh, being able to shut down stand fast can end that game very quickly especially <laughs> evil armies like oh my gosh yeah and combined with the fact that you already have harbinger of evil um you're 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 ending lives pretty fast so so he's sort of a, a model that shines in the late game unless you've purposely kitted your list out to take advantage of that hurric action bit because yeah. the reason we have the hurric actions don't have a with me sort of mechanic anyway and the other half are and the half that do uh, they're done like over in your opponent's lines where it's like heroic shoot or whatever. You're not even be close enough. So realistically, it's heroic move and in combat, and you have to be a clairvoyant to to try to impact combat. So it's just a move. So you know, um, but it, it is that secondary thing that's it probably more important. Um, so Tim says that he ranks this guy an eight simply because as great as it is to cancel her actions, he just finds people, more people above him. So that's what he's thinking. Um, mm. And I, I, I'd be inclined to, to reasonably agree with that. Um, I, I have him at number six. Uh, he, he was mine. So that, that, I mean, the thing is, so anyone who's seen him in the UK or whatnot, and you, and you combine him with Condi's chariots, he's great. And I, and I submit to you, he's great. I tried to like, look at this guy in sort of a vacuum or a void. He's pretty decent. I think with two might 14 will, he's a very reliable race to, to fate, you know, but it's pretty standard still. Um, but yeah, I mean, what are you guys thinking? So I, I actually put him at, at number nine, but I'll say that with the caveat that there's not a lot of light between the guys that I put between number six and number nine. I can see perfect. Yeah, any I, of them just I, I of... mean, yeah, depending on which side of the bed I woke up on in the morning, I, I might take number nine and put him at number six, uh, whatever. Mm. I think the reason I probably, I probably put this guy at, at number nine is uh, um, because I, I've just, I've, I've never, I've never found a reason to use him. Um, yeah. and put them on the board and try and figure them out. So as a caveat, actually, I should mention this because anyone listening to this probably will, if they know Kylie, um, uh, an Australian, yeah, Australian um, who won Articon Masters with the Tainted in her list, Tainted Goulevar and whatnot. Um, certainly we don't think that the Tainted is bad, um, but I think that Kylie also brought it based on her options. Well, then again, she brought it over the Witch King. I yeah, mean, it's just kind of hard, though, because it, like even though we rank him low, I feel like he's good. But we just think some people are a little better. Like all yeah. of these nine, I'm looking through my list that I made. I'm like, oh, gosh, like, well, just like Matt, if I woke up, if this was a shot a different day, like a lot of them would be switched. But I did put yeah. him at nine, nine as well, because um, I think he just... I don't want to say he's a gimmick, but he is. But he's a gimmick. A, he's a gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a gimmick, and not just that, but you you can only use this gimmick, in my opinion, at high point games, um, eight hundred or above, or maybe seven hundred and above. You guys can probably totally disagree, and our viewers might, but I feel like he's nice when he's accompanying something powerful, whether that's chariots or another wraith mm -hmm. or monsters. Goal of our we talked about goal of our with Kylie. Yeah, you just, he's like an accessory to something really special. And for that reason, I, I ranked him lower. Yeah. And but I have one more function. I forgot. He's also anti cav. If it, by the time you get the first mm -hmm. charge and you're now stuck in, you can not only prevent cavalry from leaving, but you can prevent, well, actually, it's kind of tricky because you guys don't respond to heroic actions either. So it's like, right. 
if you don't have priority, then you really, you're just stopping yourself from grabbing. Them. Yeah. That's again, like make some kind of a gimmick too. Cause it's like yeah. hit or miss. So yeah, I, I mean, there are a lot of advantages. I think that miasmic miasmatic presence rule really kind of only comes into its own when you mm-hmm. won priority. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and t- t- Tim's also chiving in in the chat saying he would, he like went from almost putting him into nine because he only really uses him with when you win priority priority. He thinks it's kind of weak in that sense. Yeah. All right. Well, then I guess with all that out of the way, uh, Rainier, we got for, or actually, I guess it's my turn. Yeah, I think it's your turn. Yeah. So Dwimmer Lake. Um, so Dwimmer Lake has got the same stats as most of the race, except which you'll see as a theme here, the might will fate. He's got zero might, 16 will, two fate. And then on the zero might, I will say that getting this model shot at is not fun because <laughs> it's really hard to stop him <laughs> from just dying turn one. But, uh, other than that, he's got pretty much everything else, the pretty standard, except for one rule, which is sap fortitude. And that's every time a hero model within six inches of Dormer Lake spends a might, will, or fate, Dormer Lake may elect to spend a point of will. If he does, roll d6 on a four up. The enemy hero must spend an additional point or of the same type, or the deed will be canceled, and any might, will spent uh, will be lost. Note that a hero model that wishes to expend multiple points of might, will, or fate may wait to see how the Dwemer Lake's role affects their first point of might, will, or fate before committing to spending any more. So it's kind of almost this one at a time effect that he creates. Uh, the Dwemer Lake will have to spend a point of will for every point he wishes to affect, but he may wait to see how his first point of will affected his opponent before deciding to spend another. Now, obviously that's the reason you're taking this guy is that sapping effect. This actually ability used to be like one of the most powerful <laughs> abilities of all the race. It was actually almost depressing how powerful it was. Now it I, it's sad that they've lowered it to six inches because it puts him in kind of a similar situation. You often see the tainted. These two are caster race. You don't want them within six inches of your enemy. Uh, generally, there's a problem if that's happening, but he really forces you to get close. So you are going to want to like barricade him with a bunch of orcs. Um, now, as far as that effect, I would say that it's interesting. I played against it more than I've played with it. And it is annoying enough where, you know, if you commit maybe five will to your, to hit of him to, to annoying the hell out of like an enemy general, like re-rolling his will against cast test or whatever, then it is interestingly useful. Um, but it doesn't rank very it's, high. It's kind of hard too, because he's, it's any, hero model so yeah. usually you want it you want a uh, a friendly hero model to like be kind of close to him to semi protect him yeah. um and like use that with it to where it's like you have throw a hero in and then they they try to like strike or something and they have to spend extra might so that's what lowers it i guess um yeah. in the sense but i still think it's really really good in a way i even it, it talk, is good talk, i just wish it was 12 inches <laughs> yeah exactly exactly we did talk about him i mean the squishy zero zero might kind of sucks but we did talk about him i think in one of our list reviews uh on a fell beast and we all were like oh yeah actually on a fell beast like he could do a lot of damage i like like the ability the, him possibly being on a fell beast or possibly being on a horse and doing some shenanigans forcing people to spend a lot of uh might but then again it's like 130 points or 170 points for that gimmick is it worth it and i don't know if i think it's worth it when you have better options my only issue with him on a fell beast is lack of options to get him out of there if you've extended him too far so you have to keep him around your orc captains or whatever to heroic move him out of there and then also lack of heroic combat capability which Mm. lots quick strikes that's my issue so he's actually one of the least likely race i put on fell beast i'm actually kind of interested in why you say you put him on fell beast well, the, the reason you put him on fell beast, I mean, as we talked about, and and by the way, I'm I'm not 100 percent convinced of this reason. I when I've taken him, I take him on a horse. But the advantage to putting him on a fell beast is it it puts people in positions where they have to call heroic moves near him to avoid having him flap in and go someplace else and and kill some mm-hmm. something. And when they call those heroic moves, that's when you can start draining their might away. Yeah. Um, yeah because six, 16 will is actually quite a lot of will 
for 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 a caster and i just the fell beast the psychological i guess thing that it does to your opponent when you're technically usually i'm on horse so you're actually adding 40 points is is a bit but just the options glare there but yeah i guess to rank him i put him at eight um which is probably higher than most of y'all would but my reason for eight is just that ability to make enemy models like do spend a lot of resources that that's really really good good um especially at high point list armies and stuff tournaments but yeah that's i just have my eight there still not in the best i think he's a gimmick just like the tainted i think he's a little better of a gimmick but he's still a gimmick i, I put him at seven i, I kind of felt like it, the problem is having to spend that will for a maybe and a 50 50 mm-hmm. maybe um you're only doing this to one maybe two heroes max so if your opponent has multiple heroes you really want to affect with this well then it's just not really happening you're probably targeting that one hero you want to make sure you like ruin him. And after that, he's going to get spent pretty quick. Um, when you combine you wanting to drain multiple points of might combined with wanting to, you know, like, I mean, you, you, you miss the first one, get the second one. I don't know. Like, I mean, you're, you're getting, by the time you're done with him and then you cast a spell or two, like he's so burnt out. He's certainly not exhausting mm-hmm. another hero without killing himself. So that's my issue. So I have a number seven for that. So, so one thing Tim pointed out um, in a uh, in a chat comment here, which is something I glossed. Oh yeah, over. he has a two-handed have. sword. I forgot. Yeah, he has a two-handed sword. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, he has a two-handed yeah. sword. So he's gonna. So you know he's going to be getting a minus one on dual rolls unless you put him on fell beast. By the way, which is another reason you can put him on fell beast because he can at least fight if he's on the fell beast because he can use the fell beast closet talons to yeah. <clears throat> to it's not get the t- minus one. Tim brings up another good point saying that like 16 might's good, but why not just bring the tainted? You mean 16 will. Oh yeah. Yeah. 16, yeah, 16 might a whole beast. <laughs> yeah. So that is, that's a good point, Tim. Like, yeah. Know, I, um, realistically, the 16 is just combining with that fortitude and you know that you have like maybe a devotion of four to five will to drain one hero. Yeah. In my yeah. Opinion. Well, I mean, the other, the other advantage he has over the undying, you know, the reason you would take him the over the undying, I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, what did did he say? The undying or take the tent? Well, you think can speak a undying. little bit. I mean, if you break up again, we'll just sort of laugh and giggle. We got Tim in like a <laughs> little cage. I, I, yeah, actually, I think, I think he already he froze. froze. Yeah, he <laughs> froze. <laughs> froze. All right. yeah, uh, right. but, but anyway, the reason the reason sixteen will is particularly good on the Dwemer Lake is because of his sap fortitude. So what mm. he can do is, if he's on a horse or you put him on a fell beast, is he can flap up or ride up within six inches cast a spell at somebody and yeah. then um you know kind of arithmetically increase the amount of will that person has to commit in order to resist that spell um, i like that yeah you could even the, flap him out of the way for your other casters too yeah um and then so so that is the advantage of using him as a caster is he is much harder to resist than other casters are because of that sap fortitude special rule. Um, I, by the way, ended up putting him at eight as well. Um, Rainier, I had the same place you did. And, We're like and right on top, like Matt, you and I are just we are copying close, each other. Close shot group. <laughs> um, again, with the caveat that, um, you know, there's this kind of group of raids between like six and nine that are roughly in the same place. Yeah, yeah um, I agree. He, he's a gimmick. He has a useful gimmick, but you need to kind of design your army around him in order to use him. Um, and I think that's why I kind of put him on the lower end of that very tight uh, shot group is that if you're going to take the Dwemer Lake, you're, you have to go into it thinking, I'm going to build this list around the Dwemer Lake and what can I do to maximize his gimmick using this list? Mm. And Tim, Tim says he agrees with you. Um, about the 10 through six wraiths. I'm probably assuming like that they were all really close to each other. Yeah. They're going to be almost interchangeable. Yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm interpreting Tim's sign language. Got it. I guess we'll go into <laughs> <laughs> for all those listening. Uh, Tim is attempting his sloppy sign. <laughs> I, uh, and it looks so like Napoleon dynamite butterflies. <laughs> So the next one we have is Kamuli Easterling, which uh, Matt, if you can read the differences All right. with him. So Kamuli the Easterling. Um, so he has he has basic wraith stats for you know fight, strength, defense, attacks, wounds, courage. 
Uh, he has two might, 12 will, which is a little low for a named ring wraith, uh, and two fate. Uh, he comes with heavy armor and sword, so no penalties there. His heroic actions are uh, channeling, challenge, and strike. Ding, 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 ding. So that ding, 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 ding. right there sets him aside from every other ring wraith except <coughs> the witch king. He is the other ring wraith that can heroic strike. Um, he has standard ring wraith options, so armored fell beast, fell beast, armored horse, or horse. He has these standard um, ring wraith uh, special rules. And in addition to that, he has the Essence Leech special rule. And the Essence Leech special rule, if I can call it up here. So if Kamol makes a strike against an enemy model, which causes a wound, he instantly regains a single point of will spent earlier in the battle for each wound caused, unless the wound is saved by a point of fate or a similar special rule. Uh, this cannot restore his will beyond 12. Uh, in addition, he can expend a single point of will at the start of the fight phase before heroic actions are declared to increase either his fight value, strength, or attacks by one for the remainder of the fight phase. Note that if he is mounted, Kamul may only ever increase his own fight, strength, or attacks, not those possessed by his mounts. Um, so... I he's a worse that's... caster, too, on some of his stuff. Yeah, yeah he's and like he's... minus one for all of his casting. Yeah, yeah, so he casts Drain Courage on a three, Transfix on a four, uh, Compel on a five, Instill Fear on a five, uh, which, so that's standard, Sap Will on a five, that's standard, and then Black Dart on a six. So uh, he is not somebody you're typically using to cast spells other than potentially Transfix. Uh, so uh, Kamul's big advantages are in fighting. This guy, Kamul is the fighting wraith. He's the combat wraith. Yeah, he is He is now the combat wraith. He used to be the Knight of Umbar. The Knight of Umbar has fallen. Now it is Kamul the Easterling. Um, and you know, he has a couple of advantages. First of all, he can heroic strike. So he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with enemy striking heroes and take them down. And a typical tactic you'll use is you know, you'll cast Transfix uh, you, you, for, you, you'll put him on a fell beast. This is a guy that always goes on a fell beast. Um, and uh, he will cast transfix on an enemy hero. If the spell goes through, then he will flap in and heroic strike to get a higher uh, fight value than the hero and then kill him and eat him. Um, if that, if the spell doesn't work, then he'll go off and he'll flap off and he'll kill a warrior somewhere. And he also has the ability because of his, his essence leech special rule where he can spend a point of will to um, up fight six, up to fight six, he can go in against elves and he can spend a point of will and out fight them and uh, kill them. Or if he's going in against a, you know, a transfixed fight five hero, he can go in and instead of spending a point of might to get the heroic strike up higher, he can just spend a point of will and get his fight value up from fight five to fight six and, uh, and be able to outfight that, uh, that transfixed hero. Um, you know, the one disadvantage that he has is, I mean, he's on a fell beast, so he's only going to have two attacks rather than three for the Witch King. Yeah. So he's not increasing his attacks is always pointless. Yeah. Um, because he can only increase his, his own attacks with the Essence Leash special rules. So that brings him from one to two, and you've already got him on a fell beast, so that's not going to help. Um, so yeah, he is the he is the combat wraith, and oh, and then of course the last thing that he gets is he gets the ability to kind of regrow will by, by killing people. Um, so usually you'll send him in, you'll kill a warrior, and then you'll have used up some will uh, doing that, so you'll send him out, you'll have him hit um, two warriors kill them kind of buffs up his will a little bit he needs to uh he needs to kill two warriors to kind of regenerate will because he's still going to lose a will every time he fights one yeah. um but uh, you can keep him in the game for a long time as long as you're not too extravagant trying to get spells off with him and most of the time you're not most of the time what you're doing is spending you know one or two will just to cast a transfix to get a target to not be able to cast a heroic strike against him um, so I ended up putting him in at four. I actually also have him at four. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Tim has him at three. He talks about the, basically the same thing. I think we all agree with everything you say. Like he can kill those elves. He can kill those fight five uh, 
what are they fountain court guard with Boromir and the banner? Like he, those elite, I guess, good armies that you see with Gladrio lady of light, like he can just throw in his grenade, like, okay, here I come like Gladrio. I'm going to try to like do 50, 50, see if I can kill you in combat before you kill me with whatever. Like I do really like him for that. And he regenerates will for that as well. So yeah, I, I like him a lot. Uh, Tim puts him at three. This one was really hard for me, but I put him at three as well because I think um, outside of the Witch King, he's really the only wraith that fulfills that role of he can go toe to toe with a mega hero and he can go toe to toe with elves and just constantly be killing. I think I made this reference in one of the episode, I think that we reviewed Easterlings. He's doing something every single turn. Yeah, and I used to play Fell Beasts back in the day with wraiths, and I felt like he's very just very reminiscent of the Knight of Umbar because he's making an impact every single game, just about every single move and constantly doing stuff. So that's why I put him at three. It was hard because a lot of people are gonna be I had at three, but he's yeah, I guess just that combat aspect I tipped me over. So Matt and Devin four, Tim and I three. Yeah. There is another. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, the reason I put him at four rather than three is because he just, yeah, my problem with him, and I still use him, I use him a lot, but my problem with him is he just doesn't quite have the assets uh, to make him a consistent killer with Mm -hmm. only two attacks and with only two might, meaning get up to the third attack on the charge. You know, whenever I send him in to do that, you know, to, you know, whenever I send him in to do that, that, swoop into battle to try and take out that hero with those stats i'm always like you know this may yeah. not work and if this doesn't work i you know i really yeah. don't have <laughs> the assets yeah. to do it again the um, two might too like is very hard for him to heroic combat all the time in and out I, th- I think what you see is you usually see we're talking about these wraiths that you add combined with other magic or combined with other wraiths I think what makes him unique is you're actually like when you put him into list because he's Easterling or Mordor, you're kind of thinking of non-casters to kind of tag him with, which kind of what you said, Matt, like you, you need another heavy hitter or two other heavy hitters to kind of uh, support him in that aspect. Yep. There is one sneaky bonus he has. You'll notice that these race, in particular the ones we've named off, have other keywords that many of the other race going forward won't have. And that's Angmar and Easterling. Having the Angmar keyword does really nothing for you. There's nothing that affects Angmar heroes that really matters. But having uh, the... that's not true. Oh, really? The Angmar special, the Angmar army special rule. It no, no, it just gives orcs terror if they're around spirits. Oh, it's just spirit. I thought it had to be an Angmar spirit. No. Uh, well, uh, no shade. Well, right. Or shade. It says Angmar's gain. Uh, yeah, terror within friendly spirit model, spirit hero. Okay. Well, uh, but the shade, I guess, is the other reason. Oh, you get a minus one on the shade. That's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's a benefit if you're bringing the shade. Then yeah. Then, but um. Okay. So we didn't mention that. But I guess Kamul has the interesting advantage of he can be furied, and he can be affected by a warhorn um, from the Easterlings, allowing him to move an additional. Is he you cavalry? Mean, he technically not a warhorn. Cast- you mean a drum? You mean the drum? A drum. Sorry, yep. drum. Yes. Yep, and it drum. would allow him to move five inches. Is would it be five because he yeah, counts five. as cavalry at that it's point? Five. So basically allow him to move 17 inches a turn if you, and remember, you don't have to stay within the radius of the drums. You can just, you know, missile him over somewhere. Um, yeah. So that's, that's two unique little advantages of him. Though I guess Mordor has a drum anyway. Mordor does have a drum. Yeah. So uh, really although, well, here. so the Mordor drum only affects uh, Mordor orcs unless you get the troll drum, which is really expensive, and that will affect the Philippines. Okay, so the East Philly drum is a cheaper alternative than to pull that off. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it is kind of like, again, like, it's it's those little gimmicks of he can go super fast and stuff are just, like, bonuses to his yeah. combat prowess, which is kind of probably why Tim and I, like, mm, very close, but flipped him to number three. Yeah. Well, should right. we move on to the Dark Marshal? We are. Bring it on. Okay, so uh, right here. we got the Dark Marshal. Um, he is, has two might, 14 will, two fate. His drain courage on a two, transfix three, compel four, and still feel four. He's standard, I think. Oh, no, his yeah, fear is actually better. 
His instill fear is cast yes. in the four round. Yeah, four plus. Yeah, it's actually, I'd never uh, even noticed that before. Black darts five, sap wheels five. His special, he only has heroic channeling, so no march or strike. Um, his special rule is rule through fear. At the start of the fight phase, before heroic actions are declared, the dark marshal may elect to spend a point of will. If he does this, all friendly warrior models within six inches of the dark marshal count as being in range of a banner until the end of the, the phase turn. Did you mention so, your fight six too? Yeah, fight. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, fight yeah, six, yeah. fight okay. six too. So right off the bat, um, I think he's really good. I'm actually surprised you don't really see him that that much. I think his fight six on a fell beast is amazing. Um, he's kind of like, I want to say your troop killer wraith. You're not going to want to throw him against even a fight five model that can rogue strike because of course he can go down 14 will is pretty good for ring wraiths especially considering he can be combat -y. i like his banner effect it's six inches and it includes all friendly warrior models so this can be allied models or, or anything um not hero which makes it kind of not as good and it doesn't go towards your banner points which is of course isn't that good but yeah i really like this guy um Casting is average to actually a little better because it's still fear. The fight six again puts him over edge. The only difference between him and Kamul is Kamul can get fight six and strike, which makes him more dangerous. But yeah, I really, I really like this guy, and I'm kind of surprised we don't see him as much. Yeah. What do you guys think? So I think I think the reason that we don't see him as much is that if you want a six inch banner in your list Siladan's a much better option <laughs> yeah that's the reason you know that's the reason we don't see him see him is Siladan can ally into the mortal list and um you know for for less points he gets a banner that actually counts toward the army bonus uh uh heroes can actually or uh, not the army bonus but toward victory points um mm -hmm. heroes can actually benefit from it and you don't, you don't have to spend will in order to create it um, and, and I think that's the, pro that, that's the problem. That's my problem with the Dark Marshal is he's not bad, but for most of the things you want a ring wraith to do or most of the benefits that he brings, there are better options to bring it. There's a better yeah. option for a banner. There's a better option if you want um, uh, uh, ring wraiths to be able to kill you know, heroes with a higher fight value. Um, and, you know, that's... Yeah, he's, he, so he's, he's there's got something that you basic, want to do like, with, yeah if there's something you want to he, do with a dark marshal there's always somebody else that can do it a bit mm -hmm. better the other yeah he's kind I of like him. has everything but doesn't specialize in any of them he's like combat light uh banner light and even like caster is kind of okay but if you compare him to the witch King, actually caster, that's like, exactly what i was going to say is that fact that he's trying to perform two roles that are actually contradictory mm -hmm. so we mentioned there's combat race sport wraith caster wraith but the problem is when you try to com combine all three of them with no ability to like get your will back you're fighting for what you're trying to do that game i mean you throw him in the combat sure but he's just draining will and of course it's tempting to cast magic with his so he kind of is one of those jack of all trades, almost as you mentioned, sort of like not mastering any real specific role, but that's just kind of what he does. Um, the fight six then in that case almost might as well be a, just a thing you can use, but not something you're going to regularly use, knowing that, I mean, let's be real, you're probably going to go through three, four turns of combat that you're going to want to use rule through fear. So now you've committed four will to that, so you're a 10. You're probably going to throw four will at spells. So what is that? three like five combats that you can maybe throw them around which is enough possibly <laughs> but uh you're not killing a lot with him and that's assuming he's not ever shot at with a magical spell so yeah. the whereas the witch king some might argue oh he doesn't have that but his crown of morgul allows him to keep his will especially since he has a larger pool anyway allows him to keep his will intact for a longer period of time and kamul as we just mentioned well kamul's not a caster so he doesn't count but but that's my issue with him is he's trying to perform so many different functions that you realistically actually are only giving him one function, maybe two. And, 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 and that maybe two is like when the opportunity arises. Yeah. The dark marshal, I think is the ring rate that got designed by a committee. 
you know, there was the there was the, the the group in the committee that said we need a we need a fighting wraith, and then there was another group that said no, we need a casting wraith, a support wraith, and then there was another group that said no, we really need a banner, and you know, kind of they all got together and came up with a compromise that satisfied no one. Um, <laughs> yeah. But but with that said, Tim is going to rise to the defense of the Dark Marshal. Um, he listed him at four. He says the fight six is awesome and the six inch banner is nice. Um, uh, and he also says the downside to him is the same conversation with the betrayer. If you put him on a fell beast, he can cast spells, buff troops, and fight. Um, but he doesn't think there's quite enough uh, will there. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. So and, when we get to the betrayer, I'll say my other folks can can do the various stuff better. Yeah, I'm surprised he actually had him so high up. I'm not gonna lie, I have uh, Dark Marshal at eight. Yeah. Um, oh wow! I yeah. actually had him. I had him up really high, but as I high. was like revising, yeah, I had him at eight. I don't like him. I, I think I, he's trying to really? do too much. I don't. I don't think he deserves high. eight. Dang, Devin. I yeah, had him. At, I, I had him. At, I had him at seven. What? Well, I, 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 I originally <laughs> had him at five. Tim, Tim uh, got off of his before, silence yeah. to object to this. <laughs> I, I'm like, sorry. He's Tim's a internet six race, which is impossible to find. And well, he, no, he it's not impossible to find. You you get Kamul if you want to. Well, fight okay, six. so there's one other wraith, but he has to spend well to do it. He just gets fight six, so he yeah, doesn't have to you, waste. I mean, more. you don't need you don't need it all the time. In any case, I mean, I have I have to say I have never taken the Dark Marshal. I've never been tempted to take the Dark Marshal. I mean, he is he is kind of one of that. He's for me. He's he's amongst that group of kind of themed wraiths where you need to kind of design an army around him in order to come up with a reason to to take him mm. um and you know i put him i think second in that group of, of four race the kind of cluster near but not at the bottom of my list well, um, I'll, I'll, co- I'll come to tim's defense and say i i do think this fight six is phenomenal and i think it's great and it I ranked him high because of that <laughs> like that's, but like, i don't know how but I'm but but, but what everybody else is saying and i agree kamul plays that role better and it is that that typical I don't know. We're like, okay, combat rate, support wraith, um, caster wraith. It is kind of hard to place him. And for that reason, I put him at six. So he what he is fluctuated with five and six with me, but mm-hmm. before the podcast started, I, I, it. I, I would like, always okay, play six. this guy as a banner and a caster. And, and basically in that case, I'm like, screw the fell beast. I'm just going to, well, I mean, maybe if you have the points and you want to have that threat, which we've talked about on the podcast before having a wraith that you don't intend to use with your fell beast, but have it anyway. So sure, Felby's, but I just think the fight six isn't coming into play as much as I would like it to. Um, I I just when I when I think of him, right? I I probably don't use his banner that much because I do play with him. I, I really like him actually. Um, I don't use his banner as much because I want to save that will for casting. Or if there's nothing to cast on, that doesn't really matter. I'll use the banner, and it kind of works like that. Um, like I said, when Matt was reading on my comment, I do think he struggles from that will aspect where I wish he had like 16 yes. or something like that. But I think him fighting at fight six with the ability to get a banner is fantastic. So, I love him. Let's analyze fight six. All right. So let me, as a person who plays Gulabar all the time, when you throw Gulabar out at a hero and that hero's hurt strike, that fight seven is going to feel real small. So you don't do it. Right. You'd sap him up somewhere else or whatever. So now we got fight six, but he doesn't have heroic strike, which means anything with fight six or above, you're going to be real tempted not to throw him in there. So you're going to do what? You're going to transfix him, which means your fight six is irrelevant now. And I mean, it, I don't know, irrelevant probably being the right word. Well, how many models are fight seven or above in the game? You know what I mean? Like, no, I no, no. Heroic it. strike is what I'm talking about. So, oh, like, Boulevard it. has mm-hmm. fight seven. But when you don't have Rook Strike, which Boulevard does not, you throw him into a hero with Rook Strike, it feels kind of nerve wracking. And so you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to do that. This guy yeah. doesn't have Rook Strike, which means he has the one thing he would have used anyway, which is Transfix. So the only time I could see it really being useful, Fight Six versus Elves, which is nice, but then you're throwing him in a new combat role. And then number two is, I guess, when you Transfix, you don't actually drop their fight value now. So if you're dealing with a fight five hero, which is actually fairly common, well, great. Now you can throw them in with Felby. So I'll give the fight six for that. For any other purpose, it's not it's not great. It works great on Kamul or or like the Witch King because they do have that extra option. But or well, 
Which yeah, but you don't charge the Dark Marshal in unless you know that they're transfixed. Like, I'm not charging yeah. the Dark Marshal into Alrond unless I know for a fact he's transfixed. Like, yes, he I'll, can fight another fight. I'll, I'll come to uh, Tim's defense, though. I do agree with you, Tim, because in a sense, it's like Kamul, you have to be throwing him in a combat to get his worth. The Dark Marshal, you can have him behind your lines. It's like Solodon. You sit him back and you let him use the banner. Yeah, ca casting, shoo, shoo, shoo. Solodon has three fights and can strike but he's soft and squishy. This guy just doesn't have strike, which makes him kind of squishy, but you can, like he has, he has that banner effect and you can shoot cast really good casting also with him. And like, that's not the worst. We'll talk about the shadow Lord shadow Lord. Of course, way better. I was going to bring something but, up about him, but, but the shadow Lord just sits back and casts. And it's like, if he's on a fell beast, yeah, maybe I can throw him in when I want, if I want the dark Marsh Marshall in the sense has the same, semi roll except for some better things we'll talk about but like the fight six is kind of like just a bonus when you do consider his casting ability and I the banner effect i can give you that but but, but i do agree he doesn't deserve to be like way up top like top three no i'm not um, I, I i could you could tell me he was six i could understand i think seven or yeah. eight is way too low for me personally but that, i agree with i agree with you though tim like i had I five, between five or six, six. And seven that does it for you there tim you have to have a cutoff point right so yeah, six, that's, you know, that's your line in the sand. Minimum, seven no. <laughs> your, your line in the sand is between six and seven you know it's interesting i wish we had the uh the transcripts of the debates that went on uh at gw for the committee that designed the dark marshal um to see how much of, of this debate played out in, inside that uh, corporate boardroom at gw when they were, <laughs> when they were fighting this out See, see, what I'm thinking is you didn't have that many strikes when the new edition first was released. Yeah. And I think this guy was supposed to be like the really good fight six, take him over. But with the new releases, it's like almost every other named hero that they release for like 50 to 75 points has strike and three might. So I think that's what kind of has no, downgraded him. I don't think he's aged that well in the new edition. Does does anybody remember, did he have no, fight but, six but what the about the um? I'm sorry. Did he have fight six in the old yeah. edition? Yeah. Yes. He did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, well, that's why he had fight six is because he had fight six in the old edition. Um, but all right. But yeah, there we go. I guess we'll move on to, but yeah, yeah move on to the Shadow, the Shadow Lord. Lord. Gone from one of the most taken marine race to one of the least. <laughs> Far has he fallen? Hey, you haven't, have you seen him a lot still? The Shadow Lord? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're gonna, I don't we're gonna have it. We're gonna yeah, have we're gonna have. Like, we're gonna get into this. this. Oh my gosh, there's some fighting words that. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I've not seen it. No. So first, per, first of all, I'm gonna let you know. I ranked him as a three. So I'm not saying I don't. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought I you were saying. Whose turn is it to introduce the shadow word here? Who's, who's I'll, I'll let you do some if nobody wants to. Oh yeah, you go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So preface that I do rank him highly. I think his abilities amazing, but I'm just like, so shadow lord. Actually, 214.2, so kind of almost standard-ish now, but basically, he only has one change from the standard ring raise, which is Paul of Darkness, start of the move phase, before heroic action is declared, he may spend a point of will to activate the ability at the end of the phase, until the end of the phase. Shots against the Shadow Lord or any models within six inches of him will only ever hit on a six, which... No, it's any model, not any friendly model, which means theoretically, if you are in combat with like, I basically don't use this guy with coarse hairs. Um, so essentially there's one other difference by the way to the regular ring wraith and that black is his dart. black dart spell has has a range of only six rather than 12. oh yes that is correct which is a big deal now before i wouldn't have said that wasn't a big deal but now that you can't resist that spell um it, which for any new player listening to this you'll have to go on the faq for gandalf the white it's weird but yes <laughs> you cannot resist the black dart um uh, when targeting a horse now I did list him highly. I put him in a three. And that utility of not be having your army shot to bits on approach can actually like swing a game. Uh, there are some mm -hmm. armies entirely designed around that function to shoot as much of you off the board as possible. Um, blinding light or any of such is, is probably one of the most popular spells in the game trying to be taken amongst most forces. Mordor is certainly no exception needing it. Um, the thing is, you often don't see Mordor with him, in my opinion, no, because you, of a serious you amount see of options. Like some, hmm. I see options, like, just there's so many variations where also you're trying to bring Suladon now, like we saw Tim's list earlier. So when I was saying you don't see him very much, I don't personally see him very much. And I think it's because Mordor just has so much 
to give that they're just fighting. Yeah. Cause like, if you think about it, like a lot of mortar players are probably like, Oh, I'm going to take the witch king. And it's like, where do you fit the shadow Lord after that? Like, you know, if, or if you take Suladon or if you take, you know, I'm trying to think of any other hero that keeps getting that top spot. Um, but yeah, I, I, I start seeing that. So that's why I don't see him as well. No, I, I, I get, I get, you. I ranked him as my second. I think this guy, this guy used to be my main jam, like back in the day, like I won Nova with him and I feel like you're 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 right with with Mordor. When you're bringing Black Numenorians, uh, defense six Moranans, you don't really need that. When you're you're not getting shot up too bad, but it is the allying aspect when you're bringing him with Corsairs, when you're bringing him with Harad, and these different Lake Town armies, or of course Rangers of Athelion. Yeah, I got him at number two. I think he is. And he's a hard to like right off the bat. I was like, he's my number two right after the witch King, like no questions asked just because what he does, I guess for that, we said combat support caster. I think yeah. right off the bat, we can all, at least I, I think he fulfills two of those roles really well, caster yeah. and support. He supports, he gives that covering fire to whoever you need. You don't need it for the whole army, but maybe you need it for, like you kind of like rubbed on it, the squishy parts of it. Your Soladan, who's a hero of legend, you want to make sure he doesn't get shot out, or different things like that. Yeah, that that's what I why I think he's really good. I think he balances what most evil armies need, which is cover from fire, shooting fire. So yeah, and then of course his fourteen will, his casting is pretty good outside of black dart. But yeah, being pretty good, he fulfills those two roles. I'm, I've seen him played now at Nova when I came up against him. He was on foot or horse, or not Nova, excuse me, um, Articon. And I'm seeing more people put him on foot and horse. But I still like him on Fell Beast, to be honest. Like He's not terrible on Fell Beast, as any Ring Wraith isn't. But um, even Dwemer, like as mentioned earlier, like he's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that any new viewer might be wondering, like why would you value a, a shooting thing but not a banner thing? Remember Matt's specific comment that um, that Suladon does it better. Nobody does what the Shadow Lord does in the entire evil arsenal. Yeah. Like anything they have, nobody does this function. Mm-hmm. Um, if you were to add another model in the game, like Gladiator Lady of Light, but for evil, this then is her. Shadow Lord would fall from grace very fast. Um, so that is something to note that he is just your only way to get anti-shooting tech. In the evil, and arm. that's why I think you do see him so much. I I don't know, like in the world meta, I guess, or global meta, because he is that Lady of Light for evil in a way. I don't yeah. think evil needs Lady of Light as much as good needs Lady of Light, but still, the ability to get that is amazing. So yeah, that's why I have, I have two. Devin has three. I'm curious what Matt has. Oh, I have him as one. Um, oh. And and you know there was there was really no question and. And the reason I have him as one is because he is by far the wraith that I take the most. He is by far the wraith that Evan takes the most. Um, and and it's it's because of that combination of the spells. I mean, it's it's because, as you point out, he's the only guy that can protect army, evil armies from shooting. And there are some evil armies that really need protection from shooting. And he's almost essential in those lists unless you're going like full-on horde where your defense against shooting is i will just absorb the damage and keep going um you need him along i think you even need him along for a defense six army unless you've got huge numbers of them too um because you know if you run into something that has a lot of crossbows you know if you run into something that has you know 14 crossbows in it like another corsair army um you know that defense six isn't going to help you all that much um and uh and you know he's the guy that does the job and once you get you know kind of once you get close enough you can turn that pall of darkness off and you're evil so that allows you to then shoot into combat um you know once you're protected and he's got he's got decent spell power to back it up and you know you can get him if you just put him on a horse and say he's gonna be my support rate you can get him for 130 points which is you know essentially Galadriel of Lady of Light level of points, um, whereas you know you're you're committing probably 160, 170 points to a Witch King, um, and you know the Shadow Lord gives you you know some spell abilities and that ability to protect your army 
um, for significantly less than that. And, you know, I just, I had to put him first because he's the, he's the first wraith that I tend to go to when I'm building an evil army just to, you know, deal with that kind of mass shooting meta that exists out there. That's a really good point to make. I want to say too, I kind of go with Matt and Evan to where he's my most used wraith as well for all those reasons. It's just, yeah, he counters so much. What is, what Tim, I'm curious, what do you have? Uh, I had him at a strong two. I barely. Oh, that's all for Tim. <laughs> <laughs> we got the two. two, though. He has a strong yep, two. two. We, we heard the two. And then he's got his thinking face going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. As soon as I started saying any sort of criticisms toward the guy, the whole podcast was like, killed Evan. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, we were really like, I pulled out my, like, I had the sword ready and go. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I was gonna the say, black I, powder I, in my in my musket ready to go get you. I, I thought, you know, when you started talking about how the, the Shadow Lord had been, uh, you know, kind He's of knocked taken. off his throne in this in this edition is never taken. That was that was almost the equivalent of when Rainier put the um, Osgiliath veterans uh, on his <laughs> list of uh, most underrated models yeah exactly. <laughs> that was that was that was a miscommunication i thought it was like how are we gonna make really bad models work and everyone's coming with these power models i'm like oh i'm gonna look like an idiot but yeah that, that, that was kind of funny or almost as much as when mick said his steel door wasn't yeah yeah that's another one yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I like how i like how devin sets it up he's like okay he's really bad he's really horrible but he's in my top three and we're like ah come on yeah. <laughs> well i mean i was just saying i wasn't saying he was bad i was just like you don't see it i, I don't yeah see you're it. right he's not my i don't know like, though because like <laughs> matt and i like always bring him like i feel like in the hate i don't think i've never not seen play. him at a tournament I, mm. I I just don't I don't know why maybe it's just my games but like and I and I go to a lot of games but you know the old new edition hasn't been out that long so I mean how many games have we all been to I guess at this point because the old true. edition he was like in every list like you couldn't you wouldn't play the game without him basically um, but yeah uh, so I guess we'll never, move on to the next huh you never take shooting Devin really so you know, it yeah, could that's be that true. He, he could have been in a half a dozen games of yours, and you just never realized it. Oh yeah, and it was just like, oh, he has a wraith. Like, yeah, <laughs> just that's right. Towards you anyway. <laughs> that is true. That is actually true. So, um, all right. Well, I guess we'll go into the next wraith, and I think Matt, you bring up the Undying. The Undying. Okay, so uh, the Undying has uh, standard wraith stats. Um, he has two might. He has eighteen will. He has zero fight. Fate which uh, we'll put an asterisk next to. He has a heavy armor and a staff, which is uh, you know, kind of an interesting combination for him. Um, he, uh, he is heroic action, is heroic channeling. He has the usual armored fell beast or fell beast option. He has an option for a horse, but not an armored horse for some reason. I don't know why. Mm. Um, he, his special rules, other than the, the usual ring rate rules, the first one is arcana leech. At the start of the move phase, before heroic actions are declared, the Undying may spend a point of will to activate this ability. Until the end of that turn, the Undying regains one will point for each other magical power successfully cast by another model within six inches. This he can, easily is my top five most useless magical abilities in the game. <laughs> it, it is It is That's now. Uh, yeah, now. Before it was amazing. Yeah. But um, it's terrible. Uh, well, and then we get to... Um, you know, a, a much more useful special rule, which is eternal willpower. The Undying may expend will points in the same manner as fate points. So he basically has 18 fate points um, to start the game. Within a reasonable degree of casting spells. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, if you don't cast a spell, uh, he's probably not going to die. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, magical powers, he has standard wraith uh, powers, with the exception of like the uh, like the Shadow Lord, he has a six inch black dart. So you can no longer kind of use him like you used to use him where you just kind of kept him back as a sniper rifle to um, to cast black dart. So the, what you used to do with the Undying is you would bring him with a bunch of other wraiths. Um, and he'd be your leader too. Yeah, yeah. you make him your leader. And his Arcana Leech uh, power was automatic. Um, so what you do is you use him to just throw like 
uh, you, you'd put him somewhere near the other race and you'd throw like four or five will into a black dart and just black dart the enemy's general. And then after you did that, you'd have your other four or five um, wraiths go and cast like transfixes or drain courages around him and just power him back up to 18 points. And then the next turn, he'd fire that black dart cannon again. And you would rinse and repeat with this strategy. Um, this is less use. I mean, I'm not sure it, it's, it's one of the least useful rules in the game. I think there's probably some better candidates for that, but it's certainly a lot less useful because you got to invest a point of will to do it in the first place. So you're uh, not getting back as many and you just, you tend not to have as many casters anymore because of how magic has been uh, nerfed. So the ability was, to kind of get it back from other folks. I feel like even beyond that, like you're, you're spending the will in anticipation of successfully cast magical powers yeah. which isn't guaranteed and you must have at least two in order for this to be a net game. Yeah. And so here's the thing. I play the undying and I play them in that Gundabad list that I have, you know, the one where it's like shatters all over the place with the shade pre nerf from the shade. Now I don't play it anymore, but, uh, but basically even with them, it's just like you, you cast off two spells. They got to be like really close to him. And it, it, it's, it's kind of, like, I don't know, I, I even in my list where I was like almost tailoring around it in a sense, not really, but like I had that, it, it just rarely actually was useful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I don't think disagree his... with that. I mean, there, there are some special rules, I think, that are just entirely unuseful. And I can at least think of scenarios where this would be useful. So <laughs> that's why it's not going on my top five list of useless. Fair rules. enough. I, I, but it's, I see your point. Eternal willpower is really good. I mean, like like we mentioned, like you used to see this guy as the leader all the time because he would not die. Yeah. I still think he's an amazing caster with two might too. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. surprised they kept the might on him too. Like he was... I think one of the best wraiths in the old edition and they only really like downgraded him a little bit. Unlike the night of Umbar, which they like beat the crap out of and like left like rot in the sea. <laughs> but <laughs> no surprise on who our number tens are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I like him a lot. I, I even have tinkered with lists with him where, cause of course all of these, Oh, and real quick before I forget the shadow Lord is courage five. Whereas all the oh. other wraiths are courage six. Oh, so yeah. I want to throw well, that geez, out there about that for too. our viewers because uh, someone will realize it and be like, you guys suck. Like, you guys get everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but um, the Undying, I like making him my leader, just taking a Mortar Horde, like a really big Mortar Horde with him, maybe Shag, right? These other just like low cost, like um, heroes and stuff, to, like bring a huge Horde. And then you tag him with maybe a couple of the unnamed wraiths and you have like really cheap really good casting yeah. so yeah i i like him for that the eternal willpower he doesn't die of course still he's semi gimmicky but again the three things he's only really serving the casting role. well i actually argue he does support okay you're right support this is a very loose way of saying support but points denial is yeah. a pretty power like no one else has that as far as the race and that's why I personally like him. Um, I actually rate him pretty highly, in my opinion, mm -hmm. mostly because like I use him as a leader all the time. And his ability to cast multiple spells decently. Um, and you could stick him on a fell beast. I mean, it's not it, well, like I said, every wraith stick him on a fell beast instantly makes him somewhat combaty. So okay, no surprise there. But but he has the I, will to kind of like he has the will to keep that. To, yeah, exactly. And that's what it is. It's like, okay, he has um even to have enough. him like toss him in use one of his might heroic combat to like throw and then like if he didn't have the might dodge. then i would i would rate him much less highly but yes having the heroic combat capabilities no, no. in there he's got enough to transfix and he can pepper that target quite a bit enough to mm -hmm. get him like down to a certain point so um and, and by the way he's the wraith that can like laugh at legolas too because of the yeah AD yeah world. he is the wraith he's, of which is the wraiths are afraid of legolas yeah. You know who's gonna like shoot them through the eye, and then they're gonna he, blow their fate rolls and, and he die. And is he's like, good. yeah, all right, whatever. He also has a very yeah. funny little gimmick where if you do fire something at him, like a banishment that could kill him, and the opponent rolls like a six, you could just let it through like, okay. and, and, and roll fate. <laughs> you better roll <laughs> yeah. instead of a six. Yeah. No, but it's it's good. Like I, I wanted to rank him so high. He was like between three and five with me, but I ultimately just 
barely put Kamul and the generic Wraith in front of him, but like he should be like up to three to five to me, but I ranked him at five because of that. But I, just like you said, Devin, like the points denial is yeah. huge in this game. I remember previous episode, German meta, we talked about this, most of the German meta, like points denial is how like our guest built the list and how he said a lot of Germans built the list. And I respect that a lot. That's like my play style. Like I don't go and like smash people, but I do make sure they don't score any victory points. Like Devin's some are the same. So yeah, that's why I put him at five. He should be a little higher, but just Kamul's combat. This will probably combat-y. be a little overzealous, but I, I maybe it's me and my bias. I have him at a two. Um, mm-hmm. I actually really like him, um, and I, I've played with him quite a bit. So yeah, I mean i i i put him I put him at six, and the reason I put him at six is, I mean, I end up I end up rarely taking him just because mm-hmm. I think the influence that he has on the battlefield is not really enough for me and it is pretty minimal yeah um and that's i mean mm-hmm. you're still you're still paying even if you i mean if you just put him on a horse he's just casting spells and it costs 130 points he does have 18 will to cast spells um but uh you know if you if you burn through i mean it, it's not like he never dies uh and this is when i played against him you know what i found out is once he's kind of burned through his his will reserve casting spells because a lot of people that play him can't resist the temptation to do that you get to the end game and you know he's still only got that one wound and he's down to like you know three four or five will at the end you can get in and kill him Um, to be fair he's often brought with kardash but yeah yeah that's true i think i think Devin plays him so well to where like when i'm thinking of like ranking him high i'm like i hate playing against Devin when he plays them because like that sucker does not die and it's like in combination like you said Kardish or you you add him with a whole bunch of other casters too yeah it's just like late in the game don't cat don't do too many dice for casting and he's just always a thorn in your side so I can respect um, that too I had him at five um I agree with Devin that if he didn't get nerfed so much, I actually would have, would have had him at two. Oh yeah, um, uh, and, and well, I fully agree with that. I mean, he used to be right will, at the top of the list. Um, he yeah. can't strike, and he's a lot less. Easy. What's that? I I was just saying I I, I fully agree with that. I mean, pri- in the prior edition, before both Magic and he got nerfed, um, you know, if he if he wasn't yeah, he number one, like he was number three. two, basically second as a Shadow Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I he, he he just he got nerfed and, and you know he can't strike so he's less useful. But I, I agree he, you put him on a horse and even in this edition, him on a horse is fantastic as a general. Yeah. You just cast spells. And, and and by the way, I mean I don't I don't mean to be like you know dissing on the undying. I think I think the oh, I no, think the not. undying mm-hmm. is appropriately costed for what he brings. Yeah. Um to the point where you I mean there's there's pros and cons. I mean you know, there's, there's cons to bring him as your general too, because you end up with, um, you know, if you end up with, uh, uh, what's that one, uh, what's the one where it's the challenge of the generals with a general. Uh, yeah, yeah. Contest yeah. champion. You, you definitely need to general. transfix and, and murder whatever is, uh, but right. that's why I always had him in my Gundabad list. Cause whoever your general was, I'd be like, all right, shatter shade comes in. All right. Minus one again. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, I render him useless. You got to figure out a strategy to kind of deal with that scenario if you're if you're taking them. But anyway, I mean, there are pros yeah. and cons to him. I think he is now an appropriately costed wraith, um, yeah. which is why kind of he's probably for me like right in you know he's basically kind of like right in the middle of uh, of the wraiths. So I guess in the next one we have the Knight of Umbar. He's a ten. So all right, moving on. Uh, we, <laughs> yeah, we probably yeah. You want me to go why over? Why we all okay. put him? Last. Well, actually, all of us except Tim put him last. So I guess oh, this is all of us against Tim, Tim. defending okay. himself. So we'll go not, not, ooh, okay. So I'll go over his Knight of Umbar. Um, he has the armor of Sunderland and a sword. Uh, first off, well, he has talk, two, his, talk his stats. Will is will two might. 12 will so that's a downgrade when we're talking 14 is the average to good two fate okay that's good his magical powers are negative one to the each each one of them so mm, 
you're going to like think he's going to be a combat wraith, but let's go through why he even sucks at that. So he has armor, armor of the Sunderland. The Knight of Umbar only loses a point of will for having been in a fight if he loses a fight during the fight phase. So he can go into combat if he wins. It's not like Kamul where he regenerates for a kill. It's just he doesn't have to spend it if he if he if he does not lose a fight. Of oh sorry, his rogue actions also he only has channeling no strike or no march he also has combat mimicry um at the start of any fight phase before heroic combats or heroic actions are declared the knight of umbar may spend a will point to activate this ability the knight of umbar can elect to use the fight strength and or attack values of his opponents instead of his own he does not need to adopt all of these characteristics he could for example only adopt the fight value so Back in the day, this used to be amazing mm-hmm. because you would go combat mimicry. Well, first you would transfix fix, and then combat mimicry, use their, their profile basically against them. You could even just jump in combat mimicry and heroic strike. Now you can jump into Aragorn with your crappy casts, fail everything, be like, I have fight six like you, Aragorn. What's up, sucker? And then Aragorn goes, oh, sweet. I got heroic rogue strike but you don't what's up saka and then he just kills him so we're all gonna probably come to the same conclusion that i don't know i've used this back and when we discussed it previously in the corsairs it's the typical games workshop he was overpowered in the past let's now make him irrelevant so he's yeah, my they, they went too hard with the nerf bat like he got beat to hell that's a perfect perfect analogy you just see everyone just beat the crap out of it everyone had a bad experience yeah if the dark marshal was a wraith designed by a committee the knight of umbar is the wraith designed by a committee of interns i mean there there is just no rationale for for taking this guy he's uh the only thing i can conceivably think of is you know, if you wanted to take him and use him to kill monsters that don't have the strike ability, because you can send him in and spend a will to make your fight value um, equal equal to them, so and then have like fifty <laughs> chance. Um, not getting he hurt. goes into the cave <laughs> cave troll and he's like 50 50 let's see if it works. Yeah, and you and you get to pay you know between 120 and 100, you know. 120 and uh, you know 170 points for, that. and you get to spend one of your precious 12 will to do this honor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for all Thank all of the, no. all of the new players, <laughs> this guy used to be the glory wraith. Oh boy, I used to love him, but yeah, he nowadays was he was number. Yeah, one. he would he would probably he would be yeah. number one, number one or two outside of Shadow Lord for me too. But yeah, now I mean, think Matt, Devin, and I all say 10 for the same reasons. It's just. If all he the just other had wraith- strike like it, yeah, and all, all the other rates are kind of like ah but there's a better one this guy's like ah but why should i even bring him <laughs> you know <laughs> what i mean so it is i don't know if he reminds me of the golden king too where it's like he can kill troops and that's about all he can do the whole, yeah. the whole game I, I, you I, have I mean, he can't even kill i mean he can't even kill troops well uh, i mean mm-hmm. frankly um yeah the i don't know i I mean if anybody at at any if anyone at at games workshop ever listens to this and i'm pretty sure that they don't but you know maybe somebody who listens to this knows somebody at games workshop this guy this guy needs to get fixed and you know my my thought always was with this guy i mean he's got war gear which is the armor of the sundered land let's go with that let's turn this guy into the tank wraith because there isn't one of those Right. It'd be great to have a wraith, you know, if that armor of the Sunderland, you know, basically um, either gave him kind of free fate saves a la the, 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 you know, the, the ring that, um, that that's what he did like the goblin king thing. Or, yeah, or, yeah, or like, Mm -hmm. yeah, or like a blubbery mass equivalent, except it was some sort of armor save. Like on a four plus, he ignores it. Yeah. Yeah. Or, 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 you'd be be treading into undying territory. Yeah, and then you'd have like the naysayers being like, "Oh, you guys are like trying to make him the glory days." But I'm curious, Tim. You said eight. Why eight? Just out of curiosity, so we can all bash. Like, yeah, who, who, who was better than? <laughs> who was? Well, he worse puts than a Dwemer like below him. We know that. Uh, maybe I had Dwemer like ten. Um, 
I, I don't know if you can hear me. I think my internet's going bad. No, 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 we can hear you. Got you. Okay. Um, tainted I had at nine. Um, uh, yeah, that's where you put the angle. I can see that. I can see that. I don't know. I, I just, for myself personally, I understand. And I agree with you. He is, he is not good. You shouldn't. I just, I thought about the ability of, theoretically, as long as you're not losing fights, he's not losing will. So as long as you keep fighting troops and killing them, or if you need to go into a big hero, maybe that's when you call a heroic channel of a, you know, throw a bunch of will into it, kill a hero, you know, and he can copy the fight. But So I just, he's not great. I agree with you, but Wait. I just would rather have him over the Tainted and the Dormer like in a he, fight. The, he adopts the fight characteristics, but if you channel a transfix, it'll drop their fight down yeah so you don't have to but i'm saying i'm See, saying but you copy that you need to just fight character copy system, right if i need to you mm-hmm. know but don't you copy the the lower yeah you can copy it. now what well, did they change that you didn't used to you yeah. used to change the un you used to be yeah, able to you, it's not unmodified anymore you now copy whatever their fight value is, which you just dropped. <laughs> you the only reason you can't... channel against Aragorn, and then you're like, I copy you. Now I'm fight fight three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a yeah, so, you're right. so they ner- that's they like that rubbing that salt too. in the wound. Yeah, that's that's so... rubbing salt in the wound. <laughs> so basically they made it where you can't <laughs> copy the heroic strike, but you do copy the transfixed result. Okay, yeah, so, so Matt, Matt, Matt's saying interns, like <laughs> all these interns probably have really bad experiences with him no. in the old. <laughs> no, I'm just you can tell when they when they no. did his profile, they never play tested it. Well, ever. This is I guarantee you this is what happened is they handed this to the Games Workshop interns. And they said, look, we're redoing these rules. Um, this guy's too powerful. Um, we need you to, uh, you know, we need you to come up with some ways to kind of drop him down so that you know it's a, it's a reasonably costed wraith we need you to figure out how to how to appropriately nerf this guy and the interns went this is my time to shine how many <laughs> different ways can we come up to nerf this guy and they oh, sat yeah. down and they 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 probably worked for like 24 hours straight coming up with different ways to nerf this guy and, i'll be honest with you or after hearing this i definitely think i'm, I'm moving him definitely down to nine <laughs> maybe down to ten. <laughs> no yeah but 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 it is like I feel like they changed magic, like the whole magic synergy to make less powerful based off this guy. I get but it was, was it's like five five world. interns and they're with all of these wraiths. They're like, we have five interns. Let's take like three of their ideas and let's run with it. Here they're like, oh, we have five interns. Let's take all of their ideas and run with it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what it is is the interns like turned in like this massive folder of changes on the night of umbar and like the guy who's editing this was like yeah i'm not gonna bother reading this just put it in <laughs> <You know? laughs> and this is why you always have to check the intern's work so the there way. is no, uh, no defense no defense lawyers just yeah <laughs> so here's the silver tried. lining possible silver line i don't know so it says that he copies um their values uses their fight characteristics instead of his own but there could be an argument to be made that we're interpreting it as at the time of which you've used the ability, which is before heroic strike. But if it's just consistently copying throughout the entire turn, if it could be read that way, then theoretically heroic striking against him means he copies your new strike stat. Oh, oh, interesting. It, if it could be read that way, and I'll leave it up to our, rules lawyer matt to maybe see if i'm interpreting that correctly but well, it just kind of it, it depends on if like is it at the time of what's used or is it just what is the exact word period? well uh, so i guess there's there's two points on this right um so the first is clearly he has to declare it and spend the will to activate the ability at the start of any fight phase and then it says the knight of umbar can elect to use the fight strength and or attack values of the opponent instead of his own it doesn't say when he makes the selection um however i I mean i i would point out that the circumstances when the circumstances when if he's if a channel transfix has gone off the circumstances under which he actually needs to use this ability approach zero. The only circumstance would be is if the channeled her- channel, well, no, you couldn't because you couldn't then heroic strike if somebody has been um, channel transfixed. 
Well, so you would ignore the channel transfix. Like, I guess he would allow you to charge a hero that is not transfixed. Like, for some reason, you failed. Yep. You charge into him. You're both 5-5. Five, five, so he does a heroic strike up. But now it's like, oh, okay, it doesn't can, matter. Can you, can you copy Cause, his? Because you'll just bring it up to his unmodified. Because it's still a modified. Because it doesn't say unmodified, yeah. right? Like, which we know in the past, they specify when they mean that way. So, so now it's modified. So now it's like, all right, they're copying the, the so striking against him is useless. Assuming you spend that point of will. Yeah. I, I mean, assuming that the way that that's read and I don't know how people would, would rule that it's, it's not clear from how it's written. And because nobody ever bothers to take this figure nobody's ever asked this in an FAQ. I'm submitting this to the FAQ department. <laughs> Cause that is Although, actually, that gives you some way to line your vote. How, how is the how is yeah I was gonna say how is this a frequently asked question if it has to do with the Knight of Umbar and the current yeah right edition of the rules <laughs> I mean it's it's more of an academic question <laughs> <laughs> but all right so if that's the case let's assume that that's true does that provide him enough value to sink out of that low spot I mean no, all it means is you just so. can't hurt strike against him. I mean, Which it's just like all, all of these things, like you need like five different things to work to potentially get something yeah. off. <laughs> like, like, like all, I just, I don't know. Like, like I said earlier, like all oh, the no, other no, no. ones were, were like, there's something that's better. This one, it's just, I don't even think he like makes his way to the conversation. So here's an idea. It's just a thought. So he's on horse. You have Dolomer because he's in Corsairs. You go into the same combat. Dolomer goes a heroic strike. Maybe you failed to transfix. I don't know. But Dalmer goes in a heroic strike against Aragorn, let's say. And now you throw in the Knight of Umbar. So that means even if Aragorn goes way above your strike roll, you'll still match his fight anyway. So he's the kind of like a, a tag team guy. <laughs> yeah, if, if that, if, if that works, I mean, if the heroic strike matches with him, then that's a whole different conversation. Like that would be yeah. very interesting. Well, no, no, no. Here's what you do. You take Dalamir, right? And then you take the Knight of Umbar and then you fight a Mordor troll. Right? Because the Mordor troll doesn't have the will to resist Dalamir's uh, thing. Smoke so you bombs. drop. And then the Knight of Umbars can come in and copy his fight value, which we're not sure if we're going to copy actually the troll's adjusted fight value or whatever. But at least you'll have a, a 50 50 chance of winning. But Dalamir will still be higher. So you could do this with just, just Dalamir. Ah, uh, never mind. Don't take the Knight of Umbar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired just talking about this guy. And it's like, I'm, I'm looking at his profile. The model looks gorgeous. He's amazing. I'm having all these glory day, like past memories. Like, Oh, he used to be so fun. Now I'm just getting depressed guys. Would you guys, okay. <laughs> I, just, just before we move on to the, the next model, would you guys have said he was a top three race in the game in the old edition? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Heck well, that yeah. question. I would have, th- I would so, say he's a so, top so two. So why would they move him to number 10? I, like how did you he... nerf someone that badly? They didn't check the well, interns top work. Race. Well, he needs a nerf. We'll, we'll <laughs> they took all five top. of the inferns. This is. No, this I, is I think, clearly... I think he, he was where most of the complaints came from, I think, because he was way too overpowered and it was a typical, they changed to make him worse because he's a caster ring wraith, no strike worse fight five, all these different things. And then it was just too much to like kneecap him everywhere else. Like take away. Kevin's right though. If you give him a strike, he's fine. Here's where it probably happened. And if I'm going to just, you know, when this rule book was worked on, I think the GW team for middle earth was like three people, uh, which included a sculptor. So two people, um, basically if I'm understanding this correct, I don't know the inner workings of games workshop, but Jay was pretty much by himself writing this entire thing. And remember, it's not just this, it will be the Hobbit book and the main rule book as well. There is zero way everything was play tested. Like, I don't, I don't see how it's possible unless you brought in like a whole team of dudes. And even then, like how long does it take to take, play a typical game, you know, and then what you reset I mean, after three games, most and then that's based off one drain. game. That's not based off multiple games where you notice. Yeah, it's not games. multiple games. And now you got to test everything. Everything in this book. I mean, if you were taking every profile and say you had to test it three times, you could probably mathematically work out it would take you thousands of hours of gaming. It wouldn't be possible. So what happened, in my opinion, is understanding that not everything was going to got to. They just nerfed things on paper and didn't really think about the consequences of the 
the the amount of nerves when you when you bring it down on here and here the combination of doing that so it was like i think the decision was all right take away heroic strike from everyone okay done add a will requirement to everything with those abilities okay done and then those two in combination just created a perfect storm of problem and that's what i think happened and then it just didn't review this profile it never was and it just was like all right it's fine let's move on that's what I think happened. I think you're dealing, this is a, an example of something that just obviously wasn't actually tested after development. But if, if I'm, I'm just going to go on the theory. But they should, make a, they should make a Corsair Legendary Legion and add him then to like yeah. <laughs> redo it, like make, make, Back to make the, the Knight of Umbar great again. Like just, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't need to be great. Just make him good and that'll be enough. Like make it playable. So let's go. Watch, someone li- someone yeah. listening to this probably is going to like go win a tournament with them and be like, look at these guys. <laughs> no, nobody listening to this is ever going to win a tournament with them. <laughs> oh, just, challenge accepted. I'll just, I'll just say it right there. <laughs> two, two of our five viewers are like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to copy or fight. So should we move on to the last one, the Betrayer? Uh, yeah, let's see the Betrayer. So I'll go ahead and read him off. He is 214-2, otherwise stats doesn't change. Um, he can't bring an armored horse just like some of the other variants that we've seen. He has Bane of Kings, so that allows him to reroll all fails. And uh, then he has this one ability. So, by the way, his casting is average. Goes down. Oh, goes it's down actually down. a little worse. He's got the minus one, so he's like combat yeah. wraith casting. And then um, he's got uh, at the start of the move phase, before heroic actions are declared, the betrayer may spend a will point to activate this ability until the end of the turn. Friendly models with the poison weapon rule within six inches of Betrayer, may reroll all failed to wound rolls made with those weapons. Now here, I am going to say a caveat before I tell you my ranking for him. He is someone who has to be understood within context. Of her, uh, In the Harad list, in a very specific Harad build, guy's amazing. Like, mm. he's he's incredible. His, his, his support role is like almost a force multiplier by times three. Like it's absurd in combat how deadly these guys get. You take that away, Harad specifically. I'll even throw spiders in there if anyone's ever done that list, but even from like our resident expert spider player, it still doesn't work, but we'll throw spiders out too. After that, the ability is useless garbage that doesn't do anything. So it has to be done in this very specific list. And that's my issue with it. So outside of that, if you take him outside of that list, easily hands down one of the worst rays. And I think I think he's off. If you take because it, like I said, if you That's otherwise fair. he just That's does fair. Bane of King, he does Bane of Kings, which rerolls all fails when he strikes. So you either mount him up on Fell Beast and use the Fell Beast strikes and get two attacks, or you use his and get one, which rerolls fails. Like okay. So you, you've net zero there. So it accomplishes nothing unless you throw them on horse, in which case, okay, finally you're, you're tapping into that potential of Bane of Kings doing anything relevant. Otherwise it's a gimmick because one attack re-rolling fails is like, okay, cool. Uh, he's off. I, the only reason I didn't put him at a number 10 and he's at nine for me is specifically because of that one use case, you know, okay, in that Harad list, he's amazing. But outside of that, you will never see this guy. No, I, I get that. I, I agree with you in some aspects. I think you framed it perfectly when you said like his his support role is tripled, but outside of that, there's not much to him. Um, he kind of reminds me, as strange as it sounds, of Dune here when it comes to like his role and like, but mm-hmm. of course his role trans transform transfers to combat as well. But it's like mm-hmm. that one shot having like 20 poison shots that you re-roll everything like yeah. that's just disgusting um even that in combat you hit combat and you have serpent serpent riders mm-hmm. with their lances and oh shoot you're going to re-roll all of that soladan's going to re-roll all of that um that's gross <laughs> like you just gave your it, army poison like if yeah. they didn't already have the poison they re-roll ones mm-hmm, cool mm-hmm. Uh, no, I, I, all right i'll, I'll yeah. go that if he but like, at least cast it at a normal wraith level Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I think even even if, even if they did this though, Devin, even if they did where mm-hmm. anybody who rerolls once then gets the benefit, right? So like if you if you stab, you get to do it, right? So then like the orcs, if they get it, or from their army bonus, right? 
like it would be with broken their hell. Oh, you'd, uh, <laughs> I think everyone no, would be getting yeah. every. It, it, a lot it, of it, it is and, nice though in like that theme. He's yeah. He looks like a Harad Haradrim, like he's themed like as a Haradrim. He's clearly I do a like that is his army bonus goes red. Matt, yeah. myself, and I think Tim probably t- plays because we all play Harad, all three of us quite often. So it's like I ranked him at six just because yeah. I kind of took what Devin said and like he is specifically for Harad. But if I was gonna rank him for how much he gives to Harad, I'd put him at like a nine or nine and a half. Like he or nine, nine and a half on scale of 10. He just has so much no, to so that uh, army. So a two or a two and a half. But yeah, two dogs. I don't I'm like, like confusing everyone's like, oh, like <laughs> it, but, no, but, but if I get you. But, Rod, but, he's number one. Like, mm, screw all the yeah. other race. He's number one. Like, you don't pick it. But I get race, you. I get you. That's that, that's why but, I'm going to rank him at Rod, six. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I'm going to rank him at six order, as all out of them. context. But I, I, I like I like him in Radless, or just, yeah, I guess, six <laughs> overall with all the wraiths, but just what he gives for Harad. People use him, and they're like, oh, like, let me throw him there. He's just going to be like my shooting annihilation squad. See, but like, if you're playing Harad, he's number one, though. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. But number but I, one I still think or he's got nine a little or bit of, ten. Like, he's got a little bit of kick, kick in combat too. Like I, I wouldn't mind. Um, <laughs> what kick in I, combat? He can't even re-roll his failed roll rules on his true. fell beast. He can't but still anything with five, five and a fell beast can be mm, maybe good. I don't know for 170 points, but yeah, he six goes like I guess bottom of my top ten with a ring race but boy do i love this model like i, I know we're not talking about Haradrim list but let me just throw this out there boy this guy is amazing so I mean, yeah, if, six, we, if we have to factor in lists into this discussion then no, all our numbers are going to get changed because in an angmar list you would never bring some of these like kamul because he now makes your whole army impossible no yeah. i factored in i factored in lists i mean my criteria was how often do i take these guys and but that could be based on personal preference, like mine. Would, well, of course, it's based on personal preference. Well, giving your own views, of course, it's subjective. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, there's there's no objectivity here. Um, but yeah, I ranked him third because I, I mean, he does he makes he makes the Harad list into something that's absolutely terrifying. So you're saying you would rather Devin heard third, and I, I saw Devin's yeah. postures for everyone on Spotify. He was like, "I'm gonna tear this guy's." <laughs> You're saying you'd rather bring the Witch King, who is your no, sorry, Shadow Lord, who is your number one choice in a Harad list, than the Betrayer. In no, a I, I'm ranking it by how often do I use these guys, mm. and the Betrayer is is the third most frequently used Ring Wraith that I pull out specifically there. because you play Harad because I because I I play that Harad army and it, and he makes that a great, I mean he makes that army. So if you're not playing a Harad army, then you'd rank him like nine or ten. No, I mean, in the grand <laughs> scheme of when I use these guys, he's the third most. Third most know, he's the Wraith. That I'm going to retitle this podcast, podcast episode to our most used ring race ranked. Not <laughs> what, 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 what did you do? What, like, what, what, better, what, what did you do, what, Devin? What better endorsement of a ring race value than how often you used it, right? He is a shit Wraith. <laughs> in like 90% oh, of scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> but no i get it it's funny though this was the one where i was like kind of in my head like is he number one or ten <laughs> like it's like that's the range here's what i will say i do wish that in the game you saw poison a lot more in the evil ranks and then i would have ranked him higher up because of practicality of how often you but you go through all the poison stuff and it doesn't it's non-existent yeah well your idea of of saying that he also makes people who don't normally have poison get the poison roll on a one you know yeah on, or, uh, something like that uh, yeah basically it you know re-rolling ones i think that's a good idea and i think that's a way you would get you would get to see him more often um i worry about changing his spells to where he's a normal caster instead of um uh you know mm-hmm. somebody who casts basically one one value up from normal uh, because I think that in the context of the Harad list, that makes him too powerful. It, I right? agree. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, because he, you know, if you ha- if he was a normal caster and he was running around behind those Harad lines, casting off, you know, normal transfixes and stuff like that, he would be a really scary wraith yeah. uh, to have. 
Because 14 uh, Will is no slouch, too. Like 14 Will is no is slouch. Actually. And, oh. you know, you know you'd, you'd see people like, um, you know, allying in Cardouche just to, like, Sorry. give him more Will. <laughs> you know, to... I will say uh, Harad warriors have bloat with pipes that are poison. That is another practical use application. I forgot about yep. that. Uh, you That's mean true. Mahood warriors? Yeah, they have poison darts. Yep, they do. Mm -hmm. Um. I had him at seven, and I'll explain really quickly. Um, I actually kind of did what Devin did, and I took him as like, oh my god, what is this wraith? At well, that was all the commentary from Kim again. <laughs> Kim's commentary is, oh my god, what is this wraith? And he ranks him. Um, okay, let me try. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tim. Let yeah, let get me, it let down me to one or two it. sentences, Tim. Yeah, I'll try, I'll try to make it short. Basically, I did what Devin did. Uh, I said him and Harad is unbelievable. Him without Harad is garbage. So I kind of went somewhere in the middle, but I had to overemphasize the fact him without Harad. So I will put him at seven. Fair enough. In Harad, he's like basically almost on almost an auto include. If it wasn't for Suladan being so good, him being in Harad put him at seven for me. Him, him yeah. and Harad put him at seven. Other than that, he's he's really not good. And, and that's the thing is like, if there was just more poison in the game or honestly, easiest fix, grant everyone poison when you like reroll ones, then uh, cool. Uh, yeah, I, I'm because I'm flipping through the book and I'm like, there's no poison weapon. It's so rare. Like you'd think for a main ability, it'd be common, but it, it's actually a pretty rare thing. So, but uh, yeah, that's why I ranked him in nine. It, it, you know, but... All right. Well, then uh, that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, let us know if you agree with our choices. We seem to be pretty much agreeing on most things. <laughs> and so, but uh, let us know in the comments section below. And what would you think? Would you make the betrayer a, a nine or a higher up than the top three? Anyone who answers, we know you fell, uh, you followed us at the end of the episode and you're one of our valuable viewers. We, uh, yeah, I want to, I want to see you guys rank them, just rank them one through 10, what you, what y'all would take. Like it's, it's, I'm curious to see. And, uh, and, and by the way, we should mention, we are going to do another Q and a episode soon. So if you have, um, uh, questions for a question and answer, um, put them in there, we'll get them compiled and, uh, we will get them off and get some answers. All right, then we'll talk to everyone very soon. Bye, everybody.